What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Dissect That Film, where we dissect your favorite films, film franchises, and TV. Today on episode 70, we are talking about the 1997 classic. Yes, we can call this a classic now. I think it's because, fair. because it just hit its 25th anniversary, and according to things I've read in the past, a movie can't be considered a classic until it is at least 25 years old. In the state of Tennessee, if you have a vehicle that's over 25 years old, you can get an antique plate on it. There you go. The same thing. That's what I feel. Automobiles like. have existed longer go. than movies, so ergo. That might be the bad. Actually, the fact I just said might have been about cars from when I was young. Somebody must have told me that, but I'm going to say the same thing about movies. It can't be it considered works. a classic unless it's 25 years old. And it is. This year, I think it was back in April, uh, it hit its... Oh no! Actually, in July, because Will Smith was the uh, the July guy. You know, every all of his big movies back in the '90s came out July Fourth weekend. Yeah, so this was yeah, a, yeah. another one. So July second, nineteen ninety seven, was the release date for this book. You know, whatever. Twenty five years. Is it crazy? I remember being like a four year old kid sitting in my grandma's living room, and just she just puts this movie in and just walks away, and she's just like no explanation of what the hell I'm about to watch and there it is. Actually, no, this movie came out, yeah, no, this movie came out when I was like four or five, okay, maybe like five or six year old me is doing that. What was movie. the release year? I'm sorry, I blanked it. 97. 97, so I would have been 10 going on 11 this movie came out. So, Good Men in Black, 25 years, wild to think about. Uh, this is one of this, this movie is so memorable in so many ways and today, <laughs> 25 years later, it holds up so well. I'm going to be taking some pauses to cough because COVID. Yeah. I'm dragging ass today, too. I think she is as well. So we understand. Not same it's stuff. It's one of those things where it's it. like hiding in your throat and you're like, you don't want to do it. Just let me finish yeah. talking before it yeah. wants to come out. And it's the worst. My acid yeah. reflux does that to me all the time. You guys know I <laughs> die on here. Yeah. yeah. It's so you die randomly. Yeah. I get better, though. Yeah. So Men in Black was released July 2nd, 1997, as we stated before. Uh, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld. He also, someone who, uh, we haven't covered any of his movies on this channel yet, but he has directed, the movies that he directed before Men in Black are some pretty good ones, especially coming up, since it's coming up spooky time, he directed The Addams Family and The Addams Family Values uh, back in the early 90s, which are two of my favorite Halloween time movies. and. They just, this continues that feel like they very, feel like they're in the same universe. And it's great. These were based on comic books, which even when I watched these when I was a kid, I I don't remember seeing it. You know, you see it in the, the, the opening credits, which is awesome opening credits, by the way. Yeah. We'll oh, yeah. get to that. But they were direct, uh, created by Lowell Cunningham. A really cool artistic uh, comic books from, I believe, like the early 90s like late 80s early 90s uh wasn't hugely popular though because like not a lot of people talk about the men in black comics it's all about the movies somebody told me this after the fact and i don't remember but wouldn't this make it like one of the earliest big successful comic book movies oh yeah absolutely not 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 non like but i think it's just you know, a lot of people like don't Batman even or i just think it's people don't realize the fact that it is that these movies are based on comic books i mean it's more just the idea of the men in black. I mean, the, actually, to be honest, the the whole story of the men in black was just kind of like a uh, creepy government conspiracy stories that people used yeah, to like yeah, yeah. talk about all the time, especially like in the 50s and 60s and throughout like the Cold War and all the stuff like that, where it was. You know, they were the people that were stationed at Area 51. They were the people who were hiding all the alien secrets. And, you know, when you would see the men in like the anytime you'd see men walking around with the black suits and the black car and stuff like that. Those were the men in black. You never knew their names. You never saw like once you see them, you never see them again. Yeah, it was. And then they, they that's when uh, Lowell Cunningham kind of took that idea and created the men in black comic series, which then uh, was turned into the film series. Men in black would spawn three sequels. Men in black two, which would come out in, 2002, uh, which is 
probably my no i can't say my least favorite because international exists man in black 3 which came oh. out in 2013 and then <coughs> man in black international which came out in a year i don't care because it's a terrible fucking movie <laughs> okay fair enough at some point maybe we'll talk about it it's just it's just it doesn't feel like men in black as the original trilogy does it just if for one chris hemsworth I just, I don't know. I just don't like Chris Hemsworth as an actor. I don't. Like, Thor is tolerable to me. And I've seen a couple other movies with him where it's like, okay. But Men in Black, he's just, it, those movies, like, it's a it's a bad movie. And it's got some good people in it, too. And it's just not a good movie. Okay, or it's just not a movie enough. meant for me. Okay. You can say you don't like a movie. It's okay, I guys. You don't have, I mean, no, not for you, but I'm just speaking to everybody else. It's okay to say you don't like something. It's fine. Yeah. Um, just don't be a dick about it. Yeah, <laughs> drink. The, I'm gonna keep drinking my toxic water. So you guys no, go I ahead. Keep my water in hand. I don't know why I keep putting it down. Every time oh, I, I will put it say down, that, it's like, ha ha, cough coming. I will say, I will say this about this franchise. This is the only Men in Black movie I've seen all the way through. Really, I I I have seen a majority of the second one, and snippets of the third because it was the first it was one of the first movies that were, was playing when i worked at the movie theater yeah it was, it was avengers because this, this the third of men in black came out right around the same time as avengers yeah it was 2012 so the same year yeah and yep. i mean i started when avengers came out so it was right at the same time but i and then i never i didn't give a fuck about international so i was like eh, i i to be honest i'm trying to think of like when i started like going to the theaters a lot and i think it was when i was like pre-teens early teens i don't think i was taken to the theater a lot as a kid it was mostly i was like most of my movies were uh going to my grandmother's house and she always bought the new vhs any like when a new movie came out she was going out and buying it because she knew i was gonna watch it so that's where I watched most of my movies until about the early 2000s when my parent, my mom would take us to the movies more. I think we went and saw like Harry Potter, the first two Harry Potters. And yeah, I know. It, it no, 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 I'm not laughing at that. Keep finishing your story. I'll tell you what I was. Oh, no, it's just that's, that's when my theater experience started. Like the night I never I don't think I went to the theaters much in the 90s unless my mom took me to a Disney movie. I could just imagine your grandmother be like, oh, uh. I'm just gonna call you Parker because I'm gonna go there. Parker, look, I mean, I, do I got this new my full name on here. So, oh, I, I got this uh, new VHS to watch. It's a period piece. It's called Boogie Nights. <laughs> <laughs> it's got my favorite Burt Reynolds. <laughs> he was oh, in Smokey and the Bandit one through right. seven. Wait, what? There were <laughs> seven Smokey and the Bandit movies. Grandma, it's hardcore. <laughs> She's got like Smokey and the Bandit tattooed on. <laughs> Not everybody's, making like, your grandma. everybody's like, what the fuck is that noise? It's just a bag, everybody. I, my mic might not, might not even pick it up. I can hear Like it. I said, <laughs> I'm recovering from COVID, and I probably shouldn't have recorded tonight because I have a really annoying cough, but I wanted to. So you got to You're going to infect it. us, dude. I know. Right through the mic. Viruses are going to go digital, dude. You watch. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Woo! So this movie had a budget of $90 million and grossed over $589 million at the box office, which is just insane <coughs> right, for 1997. Deserved. This was actually the same year that Jurassic, uh, Lost World Jurassic Park came out. Did it beat it? <coughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I, I, it has got to be close, but I don't remember how. Um, it was the third highest grossing film like, of all time. At that time, uh, it, it received three Academy Award nominations, Best Art Direction, Best Original Score by the legendary Danny Elfman. I almost fucked up his that name. at the beginning. And Best Makeup. Makeup effects oh, done by Rick Baker, legendary makeup artist. Did he get uh, special effects? Or did they just rope that in at that time? Probably. Best Makeup won that year for Men in Black. Good. It deserves it. Yeah, it's got really good effects. Rick I Baker like it. Is awesome. By the way, uh, he yes, he, well, he did the makeup effects for American Werewolf in London, mm -hmm. uh, and many other movies. 
Uh, but this was also uh, very groundbreaking for uh, visual effects as well, which was done by uh, ILM, Industrial Light and Magic. Um, a lot of kind of headbutting between Barry Sonnenfeld. I wouldn't say headbutting. It's more of just like Rick was asked to do a lot of work for this movie. And then later when it would get to that scene, they were like, oh, yeah, we decided we're not going to use your puppet and we're going to do yeah. CG for this. And it was like, yeah. like, we'll get to the scene. There's a the huge. Well, I, you know, I keep saying we'll get to that, but like I'll you probably forget about. So at the end of the movie, when you meet the Edgar bug, the big cockroach, he mm -hmm. was all supposed to be practical. It was supposed like when he comes out of uh, Vincent D'Onofrio and becomes the cockroach, it's supposed to be a practical bug. And I guess there was supposed to, there was supposed to be like, he was supposed to talk still and have like a well, big he, speech to Will Smith well, he, or to well, he the, does talk at the beginning of the, he does talk. Yeah, the beginning yeah, he does. Movie, so. when, before you see him when he's in the hole, but they, it was supposed to be a lot slower that end. Mm, and okay. Barry Sonnefeld decided, I think it would be better if we did more action. So it changed it so that in with it being more action, it was going to be he, so the Edgar bug was going to move more. So they needed to do CGI and Rick mm. Baker worked for months on this giant practical cockroach like he finished it, wheeled it to set. Barry Seinfeld was like, yeah, we changed how this ends. Welcome to Hollywood, baby. I mean, Rick Baker at the time at that time was had been in Hollywood for quite a while. So, I mean, I guess it was something he had been used to, I guess. But like CG was so new, I guess it was kind of new. Like, yeah, well, oh, I guess fuck. this is when you were seeing, you know, when they're going to that big, big change where you're seeing obviously a lot less practical, like people were trying to go more digital, less practical. Yeah. And I know people like Rick Baker, Stan Winston and stuff probably felt a bit of a pinch on that. It was probably, it probably honest. I don't know how they personally, how they felt about it. But it, uh, I, personally, if it was me, if like, okay, your work is no longer relevant anymore, I would, yeah. I'd be kind of pissed about it, to be honest. Kind of like what they did with Phil Tippett for Jurassic Park. Like they had brought Phil yeah. Tippett in to do, because they were like, okay, for all the dinosaurs, we're going to do minute, we're going to do um, stop motion. And Phil Tippett is a legend. I mean, he worked on the original Star Wars trilogy. You know, I mean, he, mm -hmm. Phil Tippett, when you think of stop motion, Phil Tippett, um, he, you know, did all of create all these dinosaur designs for the T Rex, the Raptors, and all that, and then and then Steve mm -hmm. Spielberg was like, "Yeah, we're going to be doing all CG for like those things." Um, so, but the cool thing was is they're like, "We still want you on the film. We want you to be a consultant. We want you to help the guys that are doing the visuals." And now he's a huge. And he not just. Uh, I mean, he still does uh, stop motion. He just did a movie on Shutter called Mad God, which is I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it's fantastic. Yeah, I just see it too. And but he is now big in visual effects. So like him, you know, he was able to evolve his craft from being, you know, from the stop motion to then being able to take that and uh, be a visual effects artist. So, you know, it's just it, it's one of those things where the as time evolves in visual effects and makeup effects and all that stuff, you got to kind of evolve with it. And not kind of live in the past, like times change, you know. Yes, do we want to see more practical and see more of that, like physical, like I can touch it? Yes. Do I? Do I? It, I mean, we all want that. We don't want to see act like who wants it. What actor wants to be like? I always want to stare at that tennis ball. I really exactly. want to stare at that tennis ball all the time. Like, oh, no, I just. It's weird, we, but we've beat necessary. we've beat this horse on this podcast, and we'll continue to beat it into oblivion. Hundred percent. But yes, it's. I feel it makes more sense. And as an, if I was an actor, I would be able to interact better with an actual prop there. Yeah. Like a full blown. Like I want to see what it's looking what looks like that I'm reacting to. So yeah, uh, Rick Baker, legend, uh, brought. I mean, so many awesome alien. Uh, effects and the different species in this movie like yes so good so good very good uh like as we said before music done by the legendary danny elfman and it's so fucking good i mean it's danny elfman i mean yeah when does he not do a great score 
That's what I was telling Angel. We were sitting there and I was like, Danny Elfman is a Discord. Before it really got oh, into yeah, it, right? I was like, this, is, this was... Yeah, but even before, like, it's just doing, like, the little bit of noise. I was like, wait a minute. Didn't Danny, Danny Elfman do this? And it started. I was like, yeah, it's Danny Elfman. Yeah. <laughs> you just know. The that fucking piece of so shit. We were talking about... So, Barry, <laughs> so, we were talking earlier about how Barry Sonnenfeld directed uh, The Addams Family and The Addams Family Values. Yes. Well, the font that they used in Men in Black for the opening credits, and they would use it in Men in Black 2... Uh, is the same exact font they use for the opening credits for Adam's Family and Adam's Family Values. Same exact shit. Like the the lettering, it's yeah. the same font. One day we'll cover those because I never watched them. Oh, they're so fucking good. I can't well, yeah, wait like for I, Wednesday, by the way, the show uh, about Wednesday, Adams. Okay. Well, I was going to say, I've mentioned it before on the podcast. We talked about it, but. When I always go to this video store I went to, I always remember the poster for Adam's Family Value and the fucking art, uh, pinball machine. Because they had that there. So this movie was only 98 minutes long, which I thought it was longer. I remember watching, I watched this movie freeze. today and I was just like, fuck, it's over already? It's a yeah. breeze, dude. They get, they get progressively longer as they go along. As most things do these days. Uh, I think Men in Black 2 Except for my actually, penis. Barely. Actually, yeah, yeah. Men in Black Two is shorter <laughs> than Men in Black One. It's only an hour and twenty eight minutes. Really? That's t- like nine really? minutes shorter. Yeah. Uh, Men in Black Three was one hundred and six minutes, and Men in Black International, the worst one, uh, was almost two hours. So there you go. Oh, good to hear. Good. Yeah. Can't wait to cover that one. Make it longer. Fuck of it. Of course, Men in Black, being the iconic franchise that it is, and we're just talking about the first three movies. Uh, it spawned video games. Uh, it had an animated series for about four years, which I don't remember watching any of it as a kid. Uh, I don't remember. Either, I do but... remember seeing commercials for it. I think it was on like, I mean, it was a Sony yeah. property. So I'm trying to think of like what channel would it have been on. ABC, maybe Fox. No, maybe not Fox. Let's see. It could have uh, been Fox because uh, Godzilla was done by Sony. And they they sh- it was on Fox. They animated Godzilla. Uh, Kids show WB. Was. I was oh, gonna guess that. It. I was gonna guess that. It ran for four seasons. Had quite a few episodes. I, it had toys. I remember this. Vincent toys. D'Onofrio actually reprised his voice as Edgar Bug. Oh, he came back in the show. That's cool. yeah. And uh, Tony Shalhoub uh, played Jeebs uh, for at least in season one, and then Billy West took over the voice. Oh, uh, fuck you, Billy West. <laughs> Son <laughs> of a bitch. I'm just kidding, just kidding. This movie starred Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. I love the cover of this movie, by the way. So this is the VHS. This is one of the VHSs that I watched as a kid. But instead of just saying Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, they just put Mr. Smith or Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Smith. There's the connection. No, I'm Whoa. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. What? Where's our Terminator connection? Oh, jeez. I don't know if there is one, is there? Well, damn it, we'll find that hole. There's a connection to something that me and Parker covered. What? Dexter. Oh, you're right. There is? Mm Mm-hmm. There's there's an actor in this that's in... In Dexter. In uh, New Blood. Hmm. Well, you'll have to point it out to me when we get there. Was I can't think right now. Um, there are some some actors in this movie that I don't that I'm like I look at it now after like watching other people's videos on on you know talking about Men in Black and I'm like oh it's that guy from another movie, like the guy who's in the very first scene of this movie. I'm like that's fucking Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> hey, uh, I've never seen Napoleon I'm Dynamite. Throw this steak over that mountain. That movie's so fucking stupid. <laughs> it's so fair dumb. point. Oh man! But at one one point we will talk about Napoleon Dynamite on the show. Eat your fucking taters, Tina. He doesn't say fuck, but that's my our version of Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, fuck yeah, I want to watch that. <laughs> oh yeah, so Tommy Lee Jones, Will Smith, Linda Fiorentino. I'm trying to think of other things I've seen her in. Let me click her name and see what. Uh, things that she might have been in. Oh, Dogma. Oh, yeah, Dogma. Oh. Wait, what? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Who's her last? That? Bethany. Her last role was in 2009 to a direct to video movie. Oof, yeah. to May. I heard she from from reports that I've read. She's she was kind of a difficult person to work with. So yeah, I could I could see that. But I, I thought she was great in this movie. I thought I thought she was good. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, he is, to be honest, of anybody in this movie, Vincent D'Onofrio is the MVP. I'm going to give yes. an MVP award He's to great. A, a, every time we talk about a movie, there's always going to be an MVP from me. And the MVP of Men in Black was Vincent fucking D'Onofrio. Yep. Yep. Because that man is just, I mean, ever since I was a, way too young to watch this movie and I watched Full Metal Jacket and I saw that man getting fucking destroyed by Arlie Ermey, it just, it, uh, and then it, it's, and he's just so good. He's good in everything he does. Even he when he's fantastic. in Jurassic World being an idiot. Yep. <laughs> Vincent D'Onofrio. It's awesome. And he's just no complaints in this. I love Vincent D'Onofrio. Uh, Rip Torn. Another great yes. one. Gotta Don't love Zen. Name. Yes. <laughs> Gotta love Rip Torn. So yeah, this was executive produced by the man, the myth, the legend, one of the greatest directors to ever live, Steven Spielberg. He was the one who actually called Will Smith to ask him if he wanted to be in the movie. And according to things I've read, uh, his wife was the one to convince him to be in the movie. Uh, Steven Spielberg was actually the one to uh, talk to Tommy Lee Jones about being in the movie as well. And Tommy Lee Jones actually was the was an avid reader of the comics. And really liked the comics. And so when he got the script for the movie, he was very excited, but then read the script and was like, ah, this is very, very far, like, pulled from the comics. It doesn't really relate to it. And they're like, okay, well, what if we create it more closely related to the comic? And he was like, well, then I'm in. He even says it in the commentary track. He's like, I, I really, I, I thought the script was fine, but. It just, I was a huge lover of the comics, and so I needed it to, like, I, I felt like it needed to be closer closer to it. He's looking that up. I'm going to find a fucking connection between these two movies. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to find it. I was like, what's going like, on over there? I'm listening, and this, I, need to, I need to know. I don't know what the fuck I'm looking for. What am I looking for? I don't know. Brain, I brain fog. Maybe. I don't know. Is it that time already? <laughs> oh god! Listen, keep, we have are... two weeks. Don't fucking take this from me, all right? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But verbally blue balled. <laughs> Damn right. Oh my god. So yeah, this um, this is this this movie is a blast, and I can't wait to talk about it. Are you guys ready to talk about it? I, I, I don't have anything else. I don't feel like pulling up the trivia and going through and be like, this, this, this. I mean, if I think of things from when I listen to the commentary track and watch some behind the scenes stuff, then we'll talk about it. Oh, I do want to talk about how they made a video game back in 2012. Uh, and when you buy the Blu-ray from 2012, you got a little thing. It was called Men in Black. Actually, they made a few games, but this one was from 2012 for the PS3. There you go. Really? Never played it. Didn't know there wasn't like There's actual, a ride like... at Universal Studios, which I've been on. That's pretty, pretty fun. I think it's like Alien Attacks or something like that. Pretty All cool. right. Pretty cool. It's one of those ones where you, uh, it's like a four person ride and you sit and you got each got a gun and you try to see how many aliens you can kill and it racks up points uh, and that by the end, yeah, whoever yeah. gets the most points. It's a pretty cool ride. I haven't read it in like eight years, but I remember it being fun. Fine and fun. I do remember having a Neuralizer when I was a kid. That was cool as hell. The Neuralizer was one of the coolest things from this movie. I remember watching it the first time or maybe the few, first few times. And I was like, I want a Neuralizer so bad. And I remember going to a Walmart or a Kmart or something. And they had a fucking Neuralizer. Because I think at that time, Men in Black 2 was coming out. And so they had the whole Men in Black 2 line. And that's all I wanted. I wanted a neuralizer. Do I have it today? Absolutely not. Because I was a child and I broke things a lot. I want to break uh, things. I mean, me too. But sometimes I look back and I'm like, man, I wish I wasn't such an idiot. 
but then I remember I was a kid and most kids break their yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. That's fair. I break my shit too. So. Yeah. All right. Are we ready to talk about the plot? Let's do this shit. That's no, but I'm about to I'm about to connect this to another fucking movie. Super Mario Bros. This motherfucker worked on Super Mario Brothers, one of the writers, Ed Solomon. Yeah, he was one of the, he was the main writer. Yeah, we talked yeah. about him uh, in the Men in Black or in the Super Mario Brothers episode. He did, yeah, because he was the one who did uh, Bill's and Ted, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yep, yep. Uh, and now you see me from 2013. Which yeah, is we were talking about weird. yeah, but yeah, it's like the weird. Bill's and Ted talking about him. could be a movie. What'd you just say? Bill's and Ted. Bill's and Ted. Bill's and Ted. Yeah. Bill's and Ted. <laughs> All right, I'm down with it. Let's make it happen. <laughs> a movie about a guy just trying to pay his bills. It's just like, like everybody. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, let's get this plot started do it let's whip it out dude this movie opens up to danny elfman's fantastic score as we see a little cg dragonfly flying around in the <laughs> the cg sky the cg why is that, moon why is that dragonfly just in the middle of a desert <laughs> I mean, it just seems like an odd place for this dragonfly it's yeah plot armor too <laughs> it did there for a minute. Yeah, it was avoiding things. I mean, I love the opening to this movie. You get the this the it's good the old school credit sequence, which we don't get oh, in yeah. movies much anymore or at all. Yeah, and, we're not shitting uh, on it. It's 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 well done. Yeah, it's so good. The theme is great, and uh, it all ends with it getting squished on the front of a truck that clearly doesn't have any uh, windshield washer fluid because. He just uses the windshield wiper and it just smears all over the yeah. windshield. I know how it works. When the bug hits your windshield, you're like, fuck. So this is Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite driving this uh, truck full of illegal uh, aliens. Aha. Oh, yeah. Aha. Which is illegal. a wonderful, wonderful metaphor for the film. Oh, it's, it's this whole opening right is great. Because it's all about... So the opening is literally a guy trying to get illegal aliens over the you know over the border and and this movie is about you know the it, it's a pretty much about the same thing like the border patrol stops them tells them all to get out they question them and then that's when the men in black come in which are pretty much the border border patrol for the earth you yep. know and we meet K and D and I hate that in the subtitles, it's K-A-Y when it's just K. Yep. Same, they do the same for D. It's D-E-E. -E. It's D-E-E -E and then J is J-A-Y. And you're like, that's, that's, still that's not what it is, but whatever subtitles. Thank you for being there. You can uh, have your fun. Yeah. So they get out and uh, K starts questioning the the lineup there and. I, this it's so fucking good because he's literally he goes down the line he's you know being nice to everybody because he knows he knows the one and he gets to the one and it's just this dude yeah. in like an over like a just it, he looks like a caveman like yes. <laughs> like what is this dude? and he's 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 speaking Spanish to all of them and he's speaking Spanish but he's just like you know calling them names he's just like you don't speak any Spanish right and everything he says he's just like yeah 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 you're pretty ugly. <laughs> And then he's like, yeah, he tells him, tells all the rest of them to go. I love when he tells all of them, like, get back in the truck and go. And they're like, what? No. Yep. Like, yeah, that's not how that works. He's like, what is the guy? I'm trying to think of what the Border Patrol says to him. He's just like, uh, like, Kay gets really mad about it. Yeah, yeah. He like, I don't remember specifically what he says. He's like, like don't, yeah, don't question me or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, Bitch. But yeah. This is our this is our connection. Rainbow connection. The cop or the INS agent. The main guy? Yep. He was in a Terminator movie? No, he was in Dexter. New Blood. Really? Who he was, was he? He was Edward Olson. He was the old guy? He was the um the oil guy. You're talking about the guy who then gets killed when uh when um Mikey gets killed. He's the one who gets covered in the goo. Yeah. He's so young in this movie. I know. <laughs> I know. Doesn't look like the same guy at all. <laughs> Holy shit. That's I know. wild. I was, I was looking at him. I was That's like. That's crazy. I did not. Dang, not even he's chiseled. Remotely. I know. He has a baby face. Think of that. 
Holy yeah. shit. So K and D. He's not. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> so K. Don't make him laugh. <laughs> I know. Damn it. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to be popping cough drops this whole episode. It's fine. Mm. Uh, so yeah, they bring the the oddball down to a uh, secure secure spot just down the hill. It's fine. No one's going to look. And that's when Kay opens him up and it's actually Mikey. And I love Mikey, man, until you don't love Mikey anymore. Okay. You're just like, yeah. oh, no. I, Rick Baker was talking about when he was designing Mikey and the fact of uh, it was him. And then one, uh, it was a woman who works, uh, works for ILM. And they were talking about how, like, they wanted to create Mikey. So, like, you don't really have that connection. You Like, you don't feel too bad when he dies. And you're like, no, man, Mikey's awesome. And then he just well, yeah. turns into a savage animal. <laughs> well, I mean, they're like, dude, you know, at first, like, Mikey's like, he's complying. Yeah. It's until that other guy shows up. The problems start. Yeah. I just, I love that, like, the, he's still, he's just holding the head the whole time. And, like, give me that head. Yeah, he's, like, <laughs> talking to him. But, like, Mikey, you know you're not supposed to be here. What are you doing? Like, <laughs> and uh, so they had a guy in a suit, of course, for uh, yep. the close-up, non-moving shots of Mikey. Yep. And uh, the actor said it was the one of the most uncomfortable things he's ever had to do. It's very constricting. Um, I guess he was really good, like very, especially with like motion with co- like heavier costumes. <laughs> Well, the uh, suit looked good. Oh, suit looked great. The practicals of the suit, suit looked great. great. Uh, and and of course, like when they he does any fast motions, like the running and the jumping, it's all done by ILM. But yeah, uh, the head uh, border patrol guy comes across the uh, top of the hill and notices what's going on, and comes like, oh, and then you see Mikey's one eye like look backwards and see him, and he's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, wait a minute, he turns, he turns to chase him. He knocks D down. He runs. Uh, I don't understand what K is doing where he's like, D, shoot him, D, shoot him. You're like, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, you, you yeah. just stayed there the whole time. Just like, are you just waiting for him? Like, I think this was like a test. He was like, I, I think this was the test of like, maybe it is time for him to retire. <laughs> so Probably. D can't get his gun to function correctly and K blasts Mikey right before he's about to get the guy covers the whole place in blue goo which was like five mm. was it five like five thousand gallons of this shit that they like put everywhere oh so much so much of it it looked like silly string yeah it did look like silly I string. love it though when he just waddles his way down covered in the blue and he's just like you know, yep. he's and Jay or uh, and K like explains to him things and then he uses the neuralizer on him and or him and all of his uh, co-workers. And tells him tells them, you know, that they can't be doing like training stuff way out here. It's unsafe. And, you know, he's going to talk to their, their supervisor and stuff like that. Yeah, you gotta be careful discharging those firearms around these gas lines. Yeah. He goes, yeah, the the rest of them come in. They like bur- try to, you know, they got to burn all of the uh, the rest of the stuff. What are they going to do with the guy, though? He's covering it. He says he's like, oh, check in with um, the ambulance. Oh, EMTs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, check out the really EMTs like- on the other side of the hill before you leave. Yeah. Because like the once they get out of it, they start looking around and they realize he's covered in all this blue shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Come with us. D knows it's time. And we all know it's time because uh, it wouldn't be Men in Black without, you know, with this old fucking, what are, you, what are you doing, man? Why are you still here? Pass of the torch. He man. says it's time to, it's time to end it. You know, it's it's that same line. It's like, have you ever just looked up at the stars? You yeah. know, and that's kind of the the cue. Like, it's it's time to go back to civilization, pretty much. It's their safe word. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we have a safe word. So he neuralizes him, and we then cut to our boy. Uh, what the fuck is his Edwards? That's his name before he becomes an agent. James Edwards. James Edwards. James Edwards. Third. He's doing a crazy chase through New York City. He's chasing this guy on foot. 
who everybody for the longest time thought was, uh, oh God, what the hell's the actor's name? The guy who plays Darth Maul in episode one. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, know. I don't know his name, but I know who you're talking it's about. Oh God! What the hell? Yeah, his that's name's the, Keith Campbell. Is the guy? In yeah, that's the, movie, the that's the that's the actor who played him I'm in the, sure in the movie. You. But they thought it was. But people for the longest time always thought, "Why am I blanking on his name?" I no, because I was it's I was re- the COVID brain fog. It's it's ser- no, that's just just my life. It's because we're recording. It I have everything in my head ready to go. I'm like I'm so prepared, and it's like just write it down, then idiot. <laughs> well, I, I've I've also um I was I see him from he's Toad in X Men as well, is he not? Uh, or is there a different uh, actor? Parks, Ray Parks. Parker? That's the guy who I'm thinking. Of. <laughs> wow, that took way too long. Sorry, everybody. Um, so yeah, so he's chasing this guy through New York City. I love the scene where he drops he drops in from the bridge down onto the bus. He's like, oh, he's like, it just be raining black people in New York. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> which was ad libbed by Will Smith, which is fucking great. And uh, absolutely in the fucking in the commentary track, Barry Sodefeld at as at sees they're talking about that scene, and he's just like, yeah, he just he came up with that line of like they just be dropping, and he doesn't say the n word. He says the other like the I don't know if I can say, I don't want to say it. You know the old school. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, and then and. Tommy Lee Jones is like, no, 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 it's it's raining black people. He like corrects him because he's like, oh, you just Barry Soderfeld is just this old Jewish man. Just, just yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stuck oh, in his time, man. man. Yeah. And it's this movie's so quotable, by the way. I mean, Will oh, Smith, God, most yes, Will Smith movies in the 90s were so quotable. I love when he finally catches up to him and he puts him up against the wall. He's like, you see this? NYPD means I'm gonna knock your punk ass down. Yes, gets me every time. Great so line. Good. Great line. Um, the guy does like a flip over the wall because uh, he like yeah. they like push back and forth, and then he like does a cool thing, he, which I guess was all practical. He did that, you know, without any yeah, wire. Well, he's work. a stunt. He's yeah, a he's stunt a stunt guy. man. He's a so. acrobat. He's a... got it figured out. Ha! <laughs> Bart Bart Mixon did visual effects on Terminator Two. He's one of the effects. He did the visual effects on this film. I would find it. I fucking knew. Nobody, nobody gives a shit. But that's our connection. Well, he works at ILM, minutes. so I guess that makes sense, right? I mean, ILM yeah. did T two. There you go. There you go. We got a connection. I'm listening, everybody. but I had I had to find it. I'm mean, like Dan wasn't hard. just so on his phone because he was bored. He was doing research for the show while we're recording yeah, the show. Absolutely, which is how this I did show other, works, ladies and gentlemen. I did other research too about another topic when it comes up. Wink. Nobody saw that, so I had to, you know, make an audio cue for the wink. So, so this Parker's guy. So fucking bored with this. <laughs> Sorry, I was just moving, moving on. I was no, 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 no. <laughs> Shut up, Dan. We're moving on. <laughs> Sorry, I was. All also, right, kids. I was come also on, grabbing class. another cough drop before <laughs> I went to a coughing fit. It's just edibles. Like God, I need. I this. wish, man. I wish. <laughs> just, one of these days, I'm just gonna take one before we do a recording and see how it goes. 30, 30 45 minutes of the podcast, he just goes silent for five minutes. Like I just won't say anything. <laughs> what is happening? We have. We would have to do. Uh, what is it? What? Um. Friday. Fucked up Friday. <laughs> Sounds like a great oh, the day. Movie. The movie. Isn't oh, Friday. The movie yeah. Friday. Yeah. Okay. No. If we ever do that and ever legalize it in our state, we should all take an edible at the same time and see which one like gets conked first. <laughs> like it just walls <laughs> mid fucking podcast. Or oh, no, or we could do a half baked. That'd be a better Carry yeah. on. So the man, <laughs> he escapes and he like shoots up on the side of the Guggenheim Museum, by Guggen. the way. Yeah, and he climbs up. Spider cool. Man? And he, and I just love Will Smith's reaction, like, what the fuck? And he, the guy gets up to the roof, and Will Smith is still on the bottom, and he's got to break in, shoots the door, goes in. He's got to run up the spiral, uh, you know. The it's not even I can't say staircase because they're not stairs. It's just spiral ramp all the way up yeah. to the top. He confronts the guy, 
the guy talks. I think he talks about how the bug is coming, or like they're like he's coming, he's, or something like that. He's coming. Yeah, he's failed. Yeah. So he's coming, and it's you know they're gonna destroy your planet. Like yeah. it's the end of the world, whatever. Yeah. And he does the thing with his eyes. He like he blinks. He blinks <laughs> sideways, and was like, what the fuck? And then he backs up, and he falls backwards. And you never see for the longest time when I was a kid up until probably like five ten years ago, I thought like when he looked over the wall, you were gonna see that it, the there was no body like the guy just didn't die, but I guess it just never shows it. So like he dies. You're like, Which is surprising oh, for the other stuff that this movie does show because I was even talking about yeah. God, they got a lot got a look they got away with a lot in this movie. He didn't for need to PG show 30. like a giant splatter. Just, yeah, just like a bug getting squished. <laughs> Irony to later. Was this guy a bug though? No, because they don't. They so. don't tell you what he's from, or what kind of alien he's he is. Lizard. He had to be eyes like eyes. breathe through his eyes. Yeah. What, what if he's a fish person? Yeah, that could be fish. Like our gills. <clears throat> well, they uh, do call him a cephalopoid, which would be octopus esque. Make me care. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Squidward. We then meet Edgar. He's not a very nice person. He treats his wife like shit. Uh, oh his... God, he does. <laughs> I, this is, uh, he's played by Vincent D'Onofrio, the legend. His wife is played by not mm. listed on the cast thing, and that's... Siobhan Fallon Hogan? There we go. Sounds I'm assuming. Right. I cannot her name is Beatrice in the movie. Her name is Beatrice. She's I remember her name in the movie. I, don't rem- I didn't remember her name. In it's the... easier to say than yeah. her name. Yeah, I'm um, sure I butchered it. Yeah, can't say the way she talks in this movie, know, dude. Fucking drives me nuts. That's how she talks. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. It kills me. I know so, she's been in other movies, but oh god. So she, you know, she's trying to. She cooks him dinner, and you hear the whole thing in the house about how you know she's trying to poison him, and say so he's, he's just an asshole. He's like the only thing that pulls its weight around here is my goddamn truck. And yes. I love how from the beginning. When you see the outside of the house, you can see the the ship coming, like it's moving up in the sky, and then it comes and and as he says that, that's when the ship crashes into the truck. And that cow loves, doesn't fucking anymore. flinch. It's just there, nope. like mm. <laughs> I love some of the dialogue he gives, and it's because you never see it. it's all from the outside of the house, like Parker was saying. And he's just like, "What is this? Look at this thing. This this is poison. This is poisonous. Don't take that from me. I'm trying to eat it. Like he doesn't even care." <laughs> Such, he's just he's just one of those pricks that just likes to hear himself talk. Yeah, he's like, I wouldn't put it past you. Yeah, it's great. So he goes up. He's just like, fucking typical. Yeah, yeah. He walks outside. He, he does the truck line. The truck gets taken out, walks out. Figures. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just, just beat no up nonchalant, life. just like walks up and uh, shoots his, you know, he aims the gun down. And that's when you hear the the... That's when you hear the creature talking from the hole. And this yeah. scene terrified me as a kid. It terrified no, me, me for the longest time when uh, he he's like, yeah, you can have my gun when you pry for my gold, cold, dead hands. He's like, yeah. he's like, all right. <laughs> and just yeah. fucking yeah. grabs him in the head, yanks him in, and you could just hear the tearing and him screaming yeah. in the hole. And you're just like, ah, like it's fucking yeah. scary. Yeah, because the 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 bug dude says something like along the lines of you know, place your weapon on the ground, and he yes, says the cold yeah, deadline, yeah. and he's like, "Your proposal is acceptable." Yeah. Yes. Oh my fucking... god, it's it's he so scary. The whole head. And, well, you know when you watch this on higher def, you can actually see the alien in the pit when he pulls him in real quick. Because on the VHS, you I couldn't see it. It was always so dark. No, I, no was... I I watched it on the Blu-ray because I wanted to watch the special features too. Um. I don't remember. I think you just see like the top. Yeah, you just see like like maybe like maybe chest yeah, or a little higher up. Know. You just I just in the original see, VHS you it's see so his dark. arm. Yeah, but you actually see. I was like, oh, I never noticed him down in the hole because it's yeah, seen that, the movie a lot. That scene, that scene's still fucking. You show that to a kid today, and they're still getting terrified and like, holy shit! Because you hear the, the the tearing of him tearing the skin off and him screaming, and then like to add to it. It flops his skin on the edge of the hole and then drags it back in. And you're just like, and all you hear is him fitting into the fucking skin. You're like, yeah. oh my god, it's horrifying. Yeah. I'm like, the that sounds. is not necessary. 
the sounds, so many sounds. And yeah, and uh, Edgar, the new Edgar, comes out of the hole, and goddamn, it's fucking perfection. He yeah, goes, great. he got love where he just runs into the front door. And just, oh, <laughs> fuck, confound Earth <laughs> technology. And he's like, Grumble. she's like, uh, uh, Edgar, are you okay? He's like, nah, I'm fine. He's like, what do you, what do you want? He's like, water, sugar. sugar. Oh, could you imagine him drink, drinking oh, that? He had to. He yes. literally drank sugar water. I guess it was like, <sighs> Barry Sonnenfeld said he drank so many, they did so many takes on it and he drank every time that he was like, like, I, I can guarantee it was like, yeah, and, uh, I, mm -hmm. cre I got diabetes. <laughs> So, I, I mean, that wouldn't have been surprising. This is not just for you guys, but anybody listening. Did you, when you were growing up, did you ever have bland cereal at home that you guys put sugar on top of? Uh, I think my mom might have bought. Yeah, yeah. Like she, you'd have like one time she bought, or some shit. like instead of buying frosted flakes, she accidentally bought corn flakes, and I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? Excuse me. Or, or we used to get like plain Rice Krispies, and we'd put like yeah. like sugar on top. I have never sugar. had Rice Krispies as a cereal. I've only had them as a Rice Krispie treat. That's fair. That's fair. He said that's the best way to have them. Yeah, that's so. The best I mean, way to eat them. it's all downhill from there. But anyway, um, like you're like you eat all of it and then you like drink the milk out of the bowl and, and it's, like, it's just like it's that just sugary magma. It's literally yeah. that's what I like, think of. It's literally. Have you, you ever had fun dip? Yes. With the stick. Fun dip's dope as fuck. And you would just after you you would just eat the stick and just do your fucking finger. Uh, yeah. And then at one point yeah. you would just pour it in your mouth like a fucking <laughs> idiot. And then you wonder yeah. why when you're 30 years old you feel like ass every day. Yeah. Yep, you're like, absolutely. well, thank you, childhood. Yep. Uh -huh. Don't regret it. Um so yeah, so Edgar asked for sugar water and he drinks it, and you get to see all the sugar in there. Ugh. And I love she's like, uh, Edgar, your skin is falling off your face. He's like, oh, yeah, I guess so. And then he, he just pulls it out. How about now? Is that any better? I love it how it shows that. So, of course, it's it's CGI or visual effects, you know, for that. And then when it turns to his profile, it's just him holding his hair. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Because yeah. I can't use yeah. that effect again. And she just passes yeah. out. I love that. I never I like so. I really never like was like, oh, yeah, that that's kind of weird. But then I watched I think I was watching like hack the movies. They reviewed this movie and I was just like, oh yeah, that's pretty fucking dumb. But like, it's, it's great. Yeah. It's whatever. It's just one of those things where it's, this movie's so good. You don't even like pick up on those stupid things. But um, it, like Vincent D'Onofrio did his research. Oh yeah. yeah. He's so good. So he, he did, I guess he apparently watched a lot of bug documentaries Yep, and he wore, um, knee braces and taped his ankles so he yeah. would walk more stiff so he'd have that like I'm weird like, stiff walk like, that's neat so good i always question though like when you see the creature at the end i'm like how the fuck does that thing fit in him like how does it fit in that skin that thing is oh, yeah. huge compact <laughs> yeah i mean i understand cockroaches are supposed to be compact but damn that thing is like that is in there like he is like fucking i mean you could tell why this man is mad the whole time he's like i'm so fucking tight here <laughs> <laughs> I can't move. Fuck. It's like those those the teenagers that wear the really tight pants. Nut huggers. Yeah. yeah. It's like, how do you move in those? It's like, oh, I wonder why your voice is so high. Because <laughs> your nuts are in your fucking stomach. <laughs> oh. I save I put them there for protection. <laughs> <laughs> so Edwards is getting questioned uh about the incident. I love his uh, jab with that cop who like was with him at the beginning and he's like, It's all you, Edwards. <laughs> yes, dude, his lines are so funny, so man. Great. Oh my god. Like, Why don't you shove another donut in your mouth? Yeah. Uh and yeah, he tells him like what he saw. He tells him about how like the eyelids they blinked a different direction. He's like, What the fuck? You guys are so fucking weird, Edwards. Like, there's no way. You're crazy. You're on drugs. There's something wrong with you. A woman oh, comes in, she says, I believe everything you saw and then like walks away and she war runs into Kay in the hallway and she gets flashed. And, I love the, the line between um, Edwards and the cop about uh, you're half my size. You're like, I am half your size. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> he's like, he's like, that cop the piss and walks away. He's like, yeah, you need 10 minutes on the, you need 10 minutes. Your ass needs 10 minutes on the stair, man. Dude, his lines are so good in this movie. Like you said, very quotable. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, Kay walks in. He talks to uh, Edwards, and so I'm going to be calling him Edwards up until he becomes Jay, and then he'll be Jay for the rest yeah. of this uh, breakdown. I know I who he like is. That. That's the way I'm going to do I'm it. Kidding. You can't stop me. He's not Jay yet. <laughs> I mean, he He's technically still, is, but uh, his name's still James. Yeah, I mean. yeah, but um, he doesn't go by that yet. So yeah, he tells him about like things that he would not like believe is you know yeah what you saw was an alien and uh it was a cephalopod or something like that right he tells him that and yeah, cephalopod know, or whatever he's like oh yeah and the eyes blinking the other way that's the way it breathes it's gills like that it's his gills and it's running out of air. he's just like <laughs> what are you All talking right. about so he brings him to a pawn shop run by jeeves or G- is it jeeves it's Never. jeeves jeeves not Jeeves. That's fucking that stupid search engine from the fucking early <gasps> to the Ash Jeeves. I love Jeeves. <laughs> Save me, Jeeves. I like how it was oh, Ash Jeeves, and then they just chained it to Jeeves. I was like, am yeah. I not asking him anything anymore? Is yeah, he not reliable? Like, no, you're demanding. Yeah, mm. but now it's okay. just Google. Um. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah, they they go to Jeeves. It's, uh, it's Tony Shalhoub. Oh, Tony yep. Shalhoub. So good. And, you know, Jay walks in, he knows who Jeeves is, and he talks to him about, you know, Jeeves like, I run a legitimate company or business here, you know, I sell everything legally, you know, I don't do any of that stuff anymore. And he's just like, okay, you know, but, you know, but my except friend about here the, says... Except about the crack. Because <laughs> oh, he says, you know, give a shit. he's like, yeah, I'm doing selling crack now, but like, this doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he's like, everything else yeah, you know, but my friend here, he says otherwise, and... And he's just like, well, I don't know. I've never seen that guy before in my life. Oh, no. He goes, oh, hey, Kay. Yeah. And they talk and stuff. And then that's when Kay is just like over the situation. He takes out his gun. He's like, see, he's seriously. I mean, I th- he seems like a, somebody who's unstable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, he won't do anything. He's just a big man with a, big, with a gun and blah, blah, blah. And then he fucking blasts him in the head. And that's when, Jay, uh, that's when Edward starts around. He's like, put your gun down right now. He's like, he didn't answer any of your questions. And then, yeah. he, and then Jeeves comes up and he's got a little eye. He's like, what the hell, Kay? Yep. Sarah, our daughter, was watching it and she's like, that guy's head grew back. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and and Edwards is like, what the? F-? And um, yeah, he uh, he shows him all the inventory that he has of illegal alien weaponry. And I just love when he exit when he they leave and and Edwards is like yeah and uh, I'm gonna be back to talk about those stolen Rolexes yeah yeah, yeah right it's so good oh man uh, J- uh Ed- oh, Edwards gets flashed after he see I like the the bike the glowy bike and he tells him about like you know there's more to the universe than you think you know. And then flashes him, and then he wakes up, and he's at a Chinese restaurant, and Kay's the end at the tail end of a joke, and I just love it. It's this morph. I love in the commentary track. Barry Sonnenfeld asked Tommy Lee Jones, "He's like, do you remember the joke that this leads that this end part is part of?" And he's like, "Yeah, but I can't tell it. It's too dirty. I can't tell it during this." Uh, during this, I just love this. The, the end of it is like, honey, this one's eating my popcorn, yeah, he's and he's just, just losing so it. Hard. <laughs> I fucking love it, dude. Like, thank and, you, Tommy Lee. And Edwards <laughs> is like, what? <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, well, okay, kid, I gotta go. Uh, here's my card, and uh, hope to see you there, and then leaves. Yeah, he's like, lay off the... Yeah, your problem, is, James, is you, uh, you lay off the sauce a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah. We then see the bug. Oh, wait, never mind. Spoiler alert. Uh, no, we see <laughs> Edgar. <laughs> Runs into Edgar the bug Steve. guy. And... Barry Sonnefeld talked about like everybody, all the the workers. So like the bug guy, and then you see like a tow truck guy later in the movie. He wanted to cast, he wanted to create those characters that kind of felt like their profession. So like this guy, you could imagine this guy could be like a bug. Like he just looks very bug-like. And yeah, uh, Edgar is wondering what the hell he's doing there. He's like, oh, I've, you know, we called about there was a, a a roach problem. He's like, well, there's no problem with roaches here. He's you should like, have got. Oh, OK. Oh, go ahead. You should have got. Um, uh, just brought John Goodman in. 
You can play the full from Arachnophobia again. Yeah. Why not? Well, just like Dan Aykroyd came in and played his uh, played Stance in Casper. Exactly. Um. So yeah. So Edgar doesn't like what's going on. He shoves the fucking thing down the guy's throat, and he just. Cool and kill, then, though. Yeah, it was a really yeah, cool kill. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I guess uh, the actor who played the bug guy, he, he is the one, he did the fall, like, on oh. his own. He did the stunt oh, fall. He just took it? Okay, yeah. nice. That Good would, for him. That would hurt, though, the way he fell. Yeah. Oh, Ouch. and to watch, I didn't say his name in the beginning, the guy who did, did the suit work for Mikey. It was John Alexander. Okay, okay. I just wanted to mention him instead of it just being the guy. Yeah, yeah that's guy. fair. That's fair. Um, you want to have your ribs compressed? Absolutely. <laughs> so, Edgar takes a truck, and he puts this very fucking small ship in the back. That ship is tiny. It is like, it's like, you see him come up to it, and he's like, oh, like, he's being <laughs> as angry, like, constipated self. It won't fit. Yeah. Oh, I got a shit. So he's literally like, yeah. he has to like carve the roof in to like squeeze it in there. I can just imagine there was like, he just shoved it until like bent the metal and didn't even give a fuck. He's like, just it's in. Good yeah. enough. Edwards goes to MIB. And I love you. Walk, you walk in. It's bad battery under the battery park bridge. Uh, he walks in. Tunnel yeah. at vent. Yeah, and the guy's yeah. always the guy's standing out, sitting outside, reading the newspaper. He's like, "Hey, where are we going?" He just points. He goes into the elevator. I love the elevator that like opens one way and then like to get out it's in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a bunch of like very you know fancy dressed military guys. They're all getting yeah. ready yeah. to get take a test, and you know Edwards is just kind of in his street clothes. And as one does. Yep. They're this my favorite is you know, Zed is talking uh about everything and he, you know, it's like, oh you know, why did we bring here and the guy says he's like, I want to be the you're looking for the best of the best of the best, sir. Sir. And then that's when Will Smith that's when Edwards makes fun of him. He's like, you're the best of the best of the best, sir. And he's like, this guy With over honors. here. Yeah, he's so excited. Honest. He don't even. He's like, he's so excited. We don't even know why we're here. <laughs> he's not wrong. Yeah. They are taking a paper test, but they. It's one of those things where it's. It's this test is not about taking the test on the paper. It's trying. It's um evolving to your environment. It's a well. It's. You know uh, what the fuck is the word? Adapting. Adapting. There you go. Words are hard for me. Um. Adapting to your environment. So, like, there's not, like, everybody's got a table in front of them. Like, everybody's, like, they're doing it weird. Like, the fucking things are flopping over and people are poking holes through their test. And <laughs> Edward snaps his pencil in half. And he's still, Rips like, them. my thing was, is, like, on. why is he holding both pieces? Just hold on to one of the pieces and just use That's the piece that has the tip. Though. Why exactly. are you... I yeah, agree. I agree. He's making it much more difficult than needs. Like, how did he break his up. pencil? I know. Yeah. He's just trying to open the, the like the paper <laughs> flap, and it just snaps. I was yeah. like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, titanium? What is this? Must be that MIB fa- funding or something. A bad oh, pencil. my God. So great. Yeah. Uh, and after a while, Edwards is like, fuck this. And there's a big, like, uh, table in the middle of the room, and he pulls in. It's just that really awful <gasps> sound as yes. he drags it's it across the room. Just- it's imp- he could drag imp- his his uh, seat. Yeah, quieter than that table. And he uh, that impresses Kay, who's watching from uh, a window. Uh, they then are doing an- another test, which is a shooting test. They go in and have to, you know, shoot what they think are enemies. And <coughs> Edwards the whole time is just waiting, and then he fucking takes one shot. He's like, Edwards, why did you think that little Susie deserved to die? And he just goes <laughs> into a whole thing. And he's just like, well, that guy up there, he's just, he's, he's got a cold. You see, he's holding a tissue. In his yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not that he's working out. Yeah. Not, he's not, what, grout? 
He's not grouchy. He's just a sneeze. Yeah, he's just sneezing. How mad would I be if somebody rolled up in a gym and popped me in the yeah, ass while I was running on trip? <laughs> I mean, he's it's, not it's wrong. so good, though. Like, his response to it. And he's just like, ew. And you, then you look at little Susie here, and she's carrying, like, quantum physics books. Like, she is far too young to be having those books. Yeah. Eight-year-old white girl in the ghetto yeah. in the middle of the night with those like, and, and to be honest, sir, I would like it if you got up my ass about it. This is like, yeah. Yeah. all right. <laughs> and then as he, like Zed walks out and then he looks at the other guys. He's like, yeah, nice shot though, right? And they're just like, fucking gay. This guy's not yeah. making it. This damn mook. They're like, we got this. You don't. So he walks <laughs> out of the room and is met by Kay and Kay kind of brings him and shows him like the file with the, you know, the guy, the kind of like, for, I guess like first alien contact or like a big meeting and all that. What, and 70s like, oh. or something. Yeah. Something like that. What was it? Might have been actually it earlier. Like a, so 60, 61. So, 61. Yeah. Because oh, here's, so, a, here's okay. the thing with the timeline. So Men in Black 3 takes place in the late 60s because it's supposed to be. When before K or J was ever born, and yeah. I think Will Smith's Will Smith technically was born in '68. I think, or something like that. But yeah, it was like early '60s. Um, and then he brings him to the room. He's just like, oh, "Okay, well, if it's not for you, I'm gonna go get some coffee. You want some coffee?" And he goes in. We meet the worms. Yeah, they're those great. Guys. They're great. And it's like some English, and then just some like mumbo jumbo, maybe yeah. whatever, their la- whatever their language whatever is. Their languages. I love what the hell they're co- talking about. Uh, whatever they're talking about, and they're just laughing. They're, they're literally those guys that are just like they just cause gossip at work. They're just yes. like complaining about the health insurance. I'm just waiting for like later, like uh, somebody's going to go back and listen to this or watch this and leave a comment on this or leave a review for whatever this episode. Like Dan's a fucking idiot. It's not mumbo jumbo. It's actually Spanish. And like, <laughs> no way. Not I didn't mean it that way. I know, but I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. It Listen, it's the internet. Anything. Anyone will say anything. They I know. I'm just, I'm just waiting for it. To cancel Dan. I'm pretty sure it was something made up. Because hey, cancel there was... that guy who's... We're not even famous. Who cares? There was two Give words. Time. There was two words that were the same, but they said different in the... in the closed captioning. It was like... Maybe this is an alternate reality where we got the worms of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> it's just where I'm like mentally where I'm at right yeah, now. There probably was. A, I'd have to look into it. You'd have to ask Adam, see if there was ever a crossover between the men in black and the TMNT. That would be interesting. I'm only saying that because I recently picked it. I bought, uh, we bought the Calabunga collection a few days ago. Oh, I need to get it. And, and um, me and uh, our youngest son played through the original arcade version of the original arcade game, not the NES one. So it was fun to play. I've never I played the arcade version. Definitely need. I am. I beat Shredder's Revenge recently, and it was fucking fantastic. And I really need to. Go I need to play the originals. Oh, um, do it. It's worth it. Forty bucks. Ah! Probably good for the Switch. Um, there you go. So yeah, so aliens do exist. K tells uh, Edwards to think about it. And Edward sits on that bench for a very, very, very long time. Doesn't move. He's just, he's there thinking. It's a big decision. Get really cool <laughs> shots of uh, New York City. Really like the, the yeah. city shots. I thought they handled this scene well because it wasn't like this really long, like he's got to go places and talk to people or anything like that. It's just like him thinking about it. It's like a really quickly abridged version. Yeah. I liked it. He just sat there thinking. So he. So we then get uh, another scene where Edgar is kind of making his way to someplace. You don't know where yet, but he's making his way. And then we go back to Edwards. Uh, Yeah, that song. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I'm out. Just walks away. Edwards shows back up to MIB and says, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. And Kay's like, cool. He meets him in the elevator, which I thought was a cool touch. And yep. he shows him um, MIB headquarters, which is really fucking cool. And we see uh, the we see the guy who plays Lurch in the Adams Family movies, yep. uh, who you yep. will see yep. in another scene. Uh, he's just, I guess, a, a guy who plays. What's it? What the hell is his name? He's one of the Aquarians. His name yeah. is Carol. 
because uh, um, Mike Mike Nussbaum was uh, Gentle Rosenbaum uh, Rosenberg, which was the other guy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carol Struckton. Sh- yeah, I don't is it Stru- strike Struckton? 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 Yeah, he plays there's, Lurch in the Adams family. There's a lot of letters values. in there. Uh, he's played. He's done. He does a lot of like. He was in Gerald's Game, which I don't know if you've ever seen that. Uh, based mm-hmm. on Stephen King novella, he was no, the I seen creepy it. fucking I love thing in that. Uh, but he's great. I love him as Lurch. And uh, we see uh, the, the, when you walk through, there's an alien. And it's got a little alien kid. And the little alien kid's like, ah. yeah. It's Vern Troyer who plays Mini Me in uh, the second what? Austin Powers movie. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, cool. I think that part. Uh, you get that. Yeah, you I see them. They're kind of on the right. It's like a yeah. parent, like a little yeah. kid. Yeah, they're like little. He's like, shut up, damn it! Kind of look like um, uh, Ewoks from Star Wars, uh, with a little less hair. Fair I love enough. when he walks up to the one, looks just like a giant snot, just like oh, yeah. goes to touch her. He's like, oh, no, no. he's uh, he's very grumpy, grumpy. He's grouchy. Yeah. <laughs> he brings him to the uh, the room that's got all like the gadgets and stuff, and. Edwards is just looking at that ball. He's like, hey, what does that do? And it just fucking it goes off. It just bounces all through the headquarters and like breaks a bunch of shit. It's so great. The best is watching it without the visual effects. Just everybody reacting and all they do is like they're doing the predetermined like explosions. The best is when it hits a guy in the head at the end of the table, knocks him out. He just goes, hey, man, somebody get that man some ice. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. No, his reaction to the whole thing is great. Some of the people just like, just like know that it's happened before, so they're just so nonchalant about it. Like Zed, Zed you know, just kind of just, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, eh, he doesn't even yeah. yeah, he doesn't even look. Like oh, this again. K catches it and he's like, yeah, this is what caused the blackout of seventy seven. Yeah, like it was yeah. some. It was like a practical joke. He thought it was hilarious. Yeah. 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 Um. They're they meet the twins. I think it was like one was like Eek and Bob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great, it's dude. So Fucking good. Name and Bob. And they're talking about uh, Edwards talks about. He's like, oh, I always thought my teacher was from Venus. Yeah, because because of the way she acted. He's the... like, oh, you mean Miss uh, Edelman? Oh, she was from Jupiter, at least one of the moons. And it just shows yeah, it's yeah. just that typical. It looks like the Jimmy Neutron teacher. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The crow lady. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, because it shows just... all the screens with um. Had Danny DeVito. Had name? Steven Spielberg. Had Sylvester Al Roker. Stallone. Al Roker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Had a so bunch of people. Got... Was great. Barry Sonnenfeld was one of them. He makes yeah. a cameo in all all three of the movies. Yeah, uh, it's got Danny DeVito, Isaac Mizrahi, um, Chloe know. Sonnenfeld, which is Barry's daughter. Who the hell is the guy you just mentioned? Isaac Mizrahi. He's a clothing designer. Dion Warwick, Newt Gingrich. Who the hell is Dion Warwick? (gasps) She's a singer. Oh Oh. Oh my goodness. I'm out of touch here. Me too. A little bit. Uh, It's okay. Um, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. So I thought that was pretty Um, cool. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, Barry Sonnenfeld makes a cameo in all three of the, actually he makes a cameo in all of his movies. So I I'm trying to remember. I don't want to I don't want to mention what his cameo is in the Adams Family movies because we'll talk about those at some point. Um but yeah, this is the cameo for him in this movie. Uh Edgar, we or th- this one they're, they're having that conversation and then Zed's like uh Edwards, you know, it's time to it's time to put it on. He's like put on what is like the last suit you'll ever wear and you're like oh yeah and you get the cool montage where they're he's pretty you're you know to become a mib agent you got to erase your past yep. yep and one of those things is the, the fucking fingerprint thing man gets me yeah like, that has to be the worst fucking thing because they're just yep. burning your fingerprints off it's terrible yep. and like uh gold's, gold, uh gold's gym membership yep. yeah yeah <laughs> yep and uh, it erases his name and just types in J. So he is now Agent J. And he's he walks up to K and he's like, hey, you know the difference between you and me? He's like, what? He's like, I make this look good. Puts on the chains. He's like, yeah, hey, I'm hey. ready. 
There's our trailer right there. Because I was like, I can still, <laughs> I can still quote it. Yep. Oh, so good. Edgar discovers his target. He did, he drives up next to Rosenberg Jewelers, and an old old man and his cat are leaving the place, and they're gonna go to a diner down the street. Uh, Zed sends uh, J and K to go catch up with some uh, with a guy who is leaving town. He's supposed to be like on a island arrest or something. Like he he's like sanctioned to a certain island, and he he's leaving. He's on like the Jersey Turnpike heading out. Yeah, he's supposed to be in Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah, Manhattan's where he's supposed to stay. Yeah. So I just love how he's like, hey, you know, you know, I'm cool as long as like no one calls me like kid or you know, junior sport sport. or sport or something (laughs) like that. It says like, hey, why don't you bring Junior here? Go do that. Yeah. And then go get him, Tiger. (laughs) Both, both Zed and fucking uh, K do it in the whole damn movie. It's great. But what does he say to him? Um, he says something to him. That's not one of the things. No, he but he says a different one. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, he names a different one. Yeah, right. Like, immediately yeah, yeah. after he tells him not to do it, he does it right away. I'm like, thank you. So the two, they're uh, the the jeweler meets up with another guy, which was the Lurch. Just yeah, it was Lurch uh, from <laughs> the earlier scene. Yeah. In the original script of this movie, these two were supposed to be uh part of differing uh, species. They were supposed to be like the ones at war. This this was supposed to be like the peace treaty between them. And oh. Edgar is a different species, but he was always he was pro- he didn't want the war to end because he was profiting off the war. And like that Which was how sense. his species was thriving. And so that was why he was going to steal the galaxy to kind of keep the war going. But they the way that it all worked out, it didn't work out exactly the way Sonnefeld had uh, in kind of envisioned and he really didn't know what the ending was going to be like so he made them the same uh, they made them both Archelians they're just meeting up hanging out yeah because it was supposed to be a little bit more toxic it was like they there's a whole deleted scene where it's like them sitting down and they're kind of just kind of like it's kind of you know the Rosenberg guy he's just like hey you know I'm glad this is what we've been waiting for for a long time to finally be able to sit down and have peace with each other. And the guy is just very cold. And he, you know, the, he, they order food. He's like, I ordered you for pierogies. He's like, oh, very exciting. And then he starts saying something. He's like, can we just, can we eat first before we talk business? Yeah. 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 It's a whole different scene. It's, it's crazy. Huh. And then, but it all plays the same where Edgar walks up to the table to hand him their food in the, the uh, bugs come out and he's like well you can you can you, you know, see cockroaches you can kill us but it's not gonna it's you know the war will end there will you can't stop instead of it you you won't find the galaxy as you won't find you won't kill the peace yeah so uh, Makes sense. But yeah they they have a conversation you know about everything i think they're gonna be leaving world and stuff they're gonna be leaving the planet um well, that's what the guy was there at MIB doing. He was coming from the ship. The Archelian. He was an Archelian coming to Earth to visit his friend. Yeah. yeah. Edgar kills uh, the waiter. Shoves him in a fucking crevice. And what it's actually Rick Ivan? Baker. Oh, I gave him a break. Yeah. yeah. It's actually Rick Baker's face, by the way, the dead body. Is it? Yeah. That's funny. And yeah, he brings the pierogies to the two guys and they're like, they're like, you know, you can kill us, but you won't, you'll never get the galaxy. And he's like, yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's not going to happen. And so he kills them both. And I love how they pull through the face plant into the pierogies. Yeah. Yeah. And then he takes the, what he thinks is the galaxy. Like that black thing on the table, like cage. Yeah, he takes it and then he like throws a bunch of dudes around, and walks out, and the cat gets, you know, stays there. Then we cut back to J and K. They're they meet up with Reggie. I don't like how they spell his name in this movie. I don't either. It's like R E D G. Reggie. It's Reggie. It's Reggie. Yeah, it's his last name. 
but they call him Reggie. Okay. Like, Reggie, what are you doing? And you're not supposed to be here. Like, you're way outside, you know, your boundary. And he's just like, well, it's, you know, he he's scared because he he's also everything links up to Edgar being there. Like the yeah. Edgar bug or whatever. Uh, and he knows about it too. That's why he's fleeing because his wife is pregnant. She's in the back. She's uh she's not having a great time. She's she's in she's in labor. And this whole scene. Okay, it's just yeah. like, hey, I'm gonna talk to Reggie. You stay here and you just try to, you know, help her through this. And he's like, Oh, okay. And me, why me? Yeah. He's like helping her breathe. I like, just, you know, breathe, breathe. And then he's like Oh my God! Something's coming out, and it's like gets grabbed by Don't tentacles. Speak and it's like, yep. Yeah, he's just getting fucking tossed all over the place, ripped into the car, ripped to the other side of the car, banged on the. I love when he's just getting smashed on the hood of the or the the roof of the car. It's great. He's like, "You're doing great, sport." Yeah. Like, just, let's, <laughs> he's like, "Has he done this before?" Oh, all yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And he gets thrown out, and he's got this adorable. Fuck, I want this fucking thing. I this adorable it. little squid. Uh, with this, with the beautiful glossy eyes, and then he pukes all over him. Yeah, which is just great. Like it's, it's, and then it throws out. He's like cute. Yeah, adorable. Yeah, yeah. Reggie talks about the bug. You know, he heard rumors, and he just wanted to make sure his family was safe. Um, I love how they so they hear about the bug, so they they're like, oh well, we need to find. You know, there's got to be news about its landing somewhere, right? So what do they do? They look up the fucking, the most ridiculous. Do these tabloids still exist? I remember when they did. Yes, National Enquirer. Oh, me too. And stuff like oh, that. Oh, no, no, no. The National Enquirer was probably the closest to being, like, at least true. There was some, like, the ones where it was like, an alien stole my husband's skin. Like, that yeah, was the one that was like, but- I remember that fucking tabloid. My grandma I, used to buy all those tabloids just so she could do the cross or the uh, crossword puzzles. Heck yeah! Because I, uh, I, uh, I remember seeing those in the checkout when like you're waiting at checkout with mom, and you'd always see them damn books. I used to read them all the time. So yeah, so they get to the tabloids, and that's when they find the one that talks about the woman who said her husband's skin was stolen by an alien. Yeah. Daily Sun. Yeah, yeah, that's one too. So they go. To Beatrice's yeah. house. Yeah. I love how Kay just names themselves Agent White and Agent Black. Yeah. No, no, he gives himself he gives himself a different name. He it's, gives himself like a normal name, and then he's like Agent Black. And Agent Black. Black first. No. And he's Agent. Uh, yeah. And he's Agent and Jay White. Jay is White, Agent White later. <laughs> right when they're the doctors. What? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she tells her story, which is what we saw about how. He wanted sugar water and, you know, yeah. they ask him questions like that. And then by the end of it, they <laughs> K flashes her and he tells her just like a basic, you know, thing to kind of because because when they flash him, they have to kind of give him a way to kind of progress back into normal life because yeah, he, yeah. you could just flash him. And if you just walked away, they just stand there. They wouldn't even do anything. You kind of got to like snap him back into things. Yeah. So he like tells her like a basic story and then jay comes in comes in and he's just like telling he's like you go into the city you, you get yourself all dolled up you make yourself look good because you know what screw him he left you yeah. Yeah. and also yeah. get an interior decorator here because damn, damn. <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so good um i just love at the point where he just keeps going where case is like okay i'm fucking out of here yeah he just walks away <laughs> um they go outside and K tests the the dirt, and that's where he figures out it's a bug. Oh yeah, he's like, you know what? Uh, you know, I can't remember the whole thing. It's very scientific. He's like, you know what turns green? He's like, uh, oh, that was on Final Jeopardy last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, do you, something about do you know what leaves a green trail? And yeah, crave yeah, sugar yeah, water. Yeah, and crave sugar water. Right. And then Why he you calls. Guys remember these things? He calls I Zed. Just watched the fucking movie too. And he's barely on the phone with him for like half a second. He's like, we like, got, got a bug. Got a and bug. he hangs out. Like, I'd have been on the other end. Like, huh? What'd you what? say? Uh, they go to the morgue to check out the bodies. And that's what that's when you get Dr. White and Dr. Black. 
And that's when you meet Linda Fiorentino's character, Dr. Weaver. And she, you know, she brings uh, Jay over and he, I love, he, he just has no fucking idea. Like he, he sticks his hands into the body. He's like, can you, can you tell me what you feel is wrong here? And he's like, no, everything seems fine. She's like, no, everything's missing. He's like, oh, he's like, well, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a, I just I bet there were no, no pieces in there. So they're, so they're yeah. intact. <laughs> somewhere wherever and, they are yeah fucking oh my god the whole conversation is like she says something and he thinks like she's flirting with him yeah yeah because he's he, like Whoa. she says he has nice eyes oh yeah like, and uh and then, in this this point you shouldn't be saying things like that when you have your hand in a cadaver yeah. like <laughs> like yeah this like, is who's she gonna talk to she hangs out with dead people yeah. that's yeah. later hey she says she hates the living so yeah. Um, it's maybe it's a field I should get into. Uh, absolutely. Same for you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I just hate people in general. Um, Not you guys, but no, we know, we know what you mean. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, K asked, uh, calls Jay over and I, I love the whole thing. It was like, oh, what do you think? And he's like, oh, she's, uh, yeah, she's a little crazy. You know, she hangs out with dead people too much. And he's like, no, the bot, <laughs> no, the body. Oh, the body's great. He's like, no, the dead body. The dead body. Yes, yes. He's like, oh, you need to go over there and check this out. So they go, he goes over there and that's, and she calls Jay back over and that's when she notices like this got staples on the ear and when they pull yeah. the ear, that's when the head comes open and there's a little alien inside. Uh, the alien, oh my God, what the hell was its name? Barry Sonnefeld gave it a name. I can't remember. It's top of my head right now. Uh, but this, anytime it was a close up of the alien, it was an eleven foot tall, like section. Really? Yeah, it was oh, like damn. actually huge. And then they would, you know, that Rick Baker had designed and created and all that. But they, That's you know, great. the way that they, awesome they filmed prop. it made it look smaller. Uh, but it's easier to film instead of having, you know, always. It, it's better for like the lip articulation. Like when it's yeah. talking, unless they do a zoom out, and you can definitely tell it's only about this big. Yeah, um, yeah. but it talks about. Cool. Oh yeah, it's really cool. Uh, it talks about the galaxy, how the the galaxy is on Orion's belt, and then it dies. <clears throat> and oh, Kay comes yeah. over. He's like, "Oh, an Archelian prince. This isn't going to be good." And yeah, nobody knows what the fuck. It means by the galaxy is on Orion's belt and the doctor gets fucking flashed like three times. Yeah. I like the time where like brain he, goes cancer. To he goes to yeah. flash her and Jay doesn't even have his glass on. He just like throws him up in front of his face. <laughs> I love in the commentary track Barry Sonfels is like, do you think that you got him? He's like, no, he was behind me. It's fine. I, it's a, it's a, direct, <laughs> it's a directional device. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. I just love how Tommy Lee Jones had to like, had to like, Explain the fact that Will Smith didn't get hit by the neuroleptic. Like we're oh, keeping so it canon. Like it's yeah. great. So I was going to go to college yeah. for uh to be a forensic. What what is it? I was going to be like bones. Yeah. Is it a pathologist? I was going to end up. Right? Yeah, I was going to, but I was like. Ooh. I don't know if I could be around dead people because I've seen too many scary movies where they come back to life. Oh man, Haunting of Hill House. One of the best morgue fucking scenes. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. One of the best scenes from Dead Silence, which is not a great movie, but it's got some good scares. Hey, we just had one recently on Reanimate. Yes. More of a comedic version, though. That's Yeah, yeah. But, but I'm just saying great, like, great morgue, morgue scenes. A lot of morgue in that movie. Yeah. Uh, Edgar tries to open the container. I love where he's just fucking throwing his body around, trying to smash it all over everything. The whole van's rocking. And <laughs> I was van's waiting in the commentary track. Happen. Yeah, I was waiting for that in the commentary track, and they didn't do it. And I was like, you missed a great opportunity, Barry. Uh, he finally gets it Rock open. And it's ball. just a thing full of diamonds. I guess it was diamonds he was going to be sending to his or giving to his kids. I think he says that at the table. Yeah. Rosenberg was giving it to the Arquillian. So he's really mad. 
that it's not the uh, that it's not the galaxy. So he decides that he needs to go to the jewelry store. So they go back to the guys go back to HQ. K is on the computer checking up on a woman. I guess who was his old girlfriend or something. And I love where Jay comes in. He's like, oh, is that your girl? And he's just like, yeah, a long time ago. He's like, all that for. Yeah, pretty much. He like, <laughs> st- he's like, transmission ended. I was like, damn, this is creepy as fuck, to be honest. Um, no, but, but for real, but I guess, though. But I they're... guess in his line of work, like, like these guys literally don't exist. Yeah. I, yeah. But like, like it's not like he's like sitting there like, Fucking beating it or something. That'd be <laughs> weird. Like, don't do that at your desk, Kay. You know? Zoom into the window. The push. zoom, the zoom feature though is like right. It's so detailed like, for 1997. What the fuck? Alien technology. I'm telling you, alien peeping toms. But that was very clear, <laughs> dude. I was for... not to like go way off track, but just talking about these unrealistic zoom features in like 90s movies. I it, this is a 90s show, but I, uh, my. My son has been on a Family Matters kick, and it's on it's on yes. HBO Max. And there's an episode where Steve Steve Urkel and uh, the father are in jury duty, and they're doing Ow. an investigation. And Steve Urkel, he's like, "This is how we know who the guy really is." So it's like, just zoom into this mirror because, like, you know, it's not the guy as he walks towards you, but when he's walking away, his reflection is on this. He's like, if you zoom in real close and it's fucking he zooms in like 25 times and it's fucking as clear than you guys are on my screen right now. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, this is like 1994, 1995. There's no fucking way that that's how this war. A CSI used to do that shit all the time, all the time. They'd be like. Oh my god, yes. you see that little piece of glass? If we zoom in 70, 175 times. Oh my god, it's crystal clear. It's fucking Kevin. You're like, what? <laughs> okay. Bones does that, though, like where they, All of them they, did it. Um, they zoom in on a, a license plate or something, yeah. and, and then they like make it real clear. It's, I'm like, how it's, the you do it's that? It's so ridiculous. <laughs> Can't do that. So I always think of super troopers. Can you blow up that image? Enhance. Yeah. Enhance. Yeah. He's like, you don't enhance. have to say, you don't have to say enhance every time. <laughs> That's so good. Yes. But oh, so bullshit. good. Bullshit. So they gotta figure out where the galaxy is. They talk about how, like, you know, the galaxy is in Orion's belt because Orion's belt is a set of stars that it's in the galaxy. Uh, they don't know what the fuck is going on. And I guess the Archillians. Fucking send like a warning shot of fucking Antarctica or something like that. Or like the Arctic. They're like, what the yeah. fuck is going on? Give us the <laughs> galaxy. Uh, and this is where K or where Zed tells K to take Jay out with him. He's like, okay, give him a weapon. So they go to the weapon room and he's like, yeah, I get a gun. And then he gets the fucking cricket. The Joy's smallest cricket. gun ever. He's like, oh, what the, what is this? He's like, I feel like I'm going to break this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so good. Totally fires it. Uh, we then see Edgar smashing up the jewelry store. He's looking for that galaxy. Uh, and then he notices that there's a picture of the cat with this, and its name is Orion. And he's got something around its neck, and he's like, mm-mm-mm. Edgar figures it out. He's got to yeah. find that cat. So he knows where to go because he knows where the cat went. Uh, but he notices that his uh truck is getting towed. And this dude is the Problem. greasiest grease ball I've ever seen. As he yes. goes out there, and I just love her. He pulls out the the gun, and he's just like, "Please!" As he pulls out this fucking huge yeah, because the guy has a shotgun. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And it's but like, then dude, he he ends up getting York, shot baby. anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Jay hard. and Kay show up right after that, and they're like in there investigating the smashed up jewelry store, and they also figure out the whole Orion is the cat and the galaxy is around its neck, but they also hear the shot outside as the tow truck guy gets shot. Yeah. Well, they, they don't figure that out yet. <coughs> that's at, that's after the scene. It's where they go and meet with the dog. That's when uh, uh, Jay puts it, Jay puts it together at the right. end of that. They see that the so, name, the cat's name is Orion. Frank. Right, right, right. Yeah, Frank. So Frank. Yeah, fucking Frank. He makes he makes a bigger appearance in uh, MI uh, MIB two. Yep. 
Um, I got one. It's so good. So yeah, so they notice. So he notices Jay immediately goes into action. Like he's a he's a cop, former cop. He goes out there. He immediately reacts to the situation and he shoots that cricket and just gets fucking thrown. Like this yeah. thing has got so much force. Oh, that was three God. times. Yeah, he gets thrown into the wall of the jewelry store. Then he goes out. And he gets thrown into a bunch of boxes, yeah. and then yeah, he gets the thrown range. through the windshield of a car. Yep, so good. And it just le- yeah. I love the truck at the the tractor trailer truck. The the actual trailer was got a massive hole in it. Yes, like holy shit. But he shoots at Edgar the the tow truck because Edgar steals the tow truck to drive away with his truck attached. He shoots the tow truck. Uh, yeah, so his truck then falls off, which has his ship in the back. So he needs to find an alternate way off the planet once he gets the galaxy. Um, this is where my notes end. So I have to remember this movie. I we then. You guys will have to help me a little bit. Is this when they go? They go. They go to talk to Frank. They go to talk to Frank. Uh, and this is when I love what Jay walks up. He thinks it's the guy because the guy is just like, this is an interesting looking dude. But it ends yeah, up being the like pug the with from, the fucking um, I love fucking New York yeah, shirt on. Yeah, because oh, the so guy funny. looks like uh, what's his face from um, Rocky Horror. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. You're I, know you're talking about, I don't know the characters, but I know you're talking about. I can't remember his name. So like the butler or some shit. Yeah, but I, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm not. I can't remember names. I don't give. It's clearly I can't remember people. I can't remember shit from a movie I've seen a thousand times. But here we are. I, um. So yeah, they meet. Uh, they meet Frank, and Frank is you know he's a he's a tough guy. He's like, I'm not gonna tell you shit. And he's just like I love where he picks him up. He's just like he just fucking shakes him. Yeah. He's like oh uh, the, he owes him money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so I'm good. Done. His excuses love his, are such shit. Oh, Barry Sonnenfeld in the, in the commentary track is like, yeah, so in the scene where you don't see him and he's shaking him, he's actually shaking a Balto toy. Balto was executive <laughs> produced by Steven Spielberg the same year this movie came out. I was like, yes. thanks, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, yeah. Barry. Oh, so good. And uh, yeah, so he explains about how Rosenberg was the guardian of the galaxy. Ha ha! Marvel, I'm sorry. I was just, that's what it says. No, it's um, fair. I, I thought of that when it came up too. <laughs> and it is a, uh, that he, that is a precious source of subatomic energy. That makes no sense. Yeah, the, gal- the galaxy was the precious. That, that's oh, why, right, right, one right, of the right, reasons right. why the bug wanted it. Wants it, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the bug would. So Edgar came here to take the galaxy to then destroy the Archillians to then profit yep. off of that. Yeah, um, because that's then what his species does. And then Frank is just illustrating the fact that just because it's, it's a galaxy doesn't mean it's not small. And they're like, oh, yep. yeah. And that's when Jay. And then they like put him down. And he like walks away or whatever, and then he sees Frank bark at a cat. Yeah, and then that's where he puts the two together. About Orion, because the cat's got a collar on that he sees. It's got like a gold right. bell on the collar. Yep. That's when he's like, "Oh shit!" Um, yeah, this is when the Archelian ship shows up in the atmosphere, and it pretty much tells them, "I beat you. You deliver the galaxy, or we destroy the planet." Yep. I'm like okay. Yeah, because they're 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 uh, holding MI, uh, MIB account for it. Even though technically it's not their fault, they're still holding them accountable for it. Yeah, so that's when Jay. No, uh, rem- so yeah, so Jay figures out that the the galaxy is in Orion's on Orion's collar. It's the yeah. little emblem, and the word that uh, Rosenberg was trying to say before he dies because he just sits there. He's like, but b- b- and it was bell. So like the bell on yeah. his collar. Uh, and it's at the morgue. The cat's at the morgue because the cat was. Yeah. I love the fucking cop. With the, I don't know if this was in the movie. This was a deleted scene or an extended scene, but it was the the bodies were taking out, being taken out of the diner, and they're like, "What do we do with the cat?" And he's like, "Ah, just bring it with the stiff." Literally, that's yeah, how the that, guy sounded. Just like bring that was a deleted stiff. scene. That was because yeah. when they brought it to the morgue, it was a uh, uh something about a problem. Yeah, what's up with the cat? Well, there's a problem with the cat. Yeah, what's yeah. the problem? It's your problem now. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm a dickhead. Oh. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, so Edgar shows up first, and you get a David Cross cameo. Yeah. Um, and he'll actually play. He actually is in Men in Black Two as a completely different character. Good. Maybe. Oh no, because he dies in this one. Uh. Yeah, and I just love the whole thing where he, you know, he's hitting the bugs on the the counter with the fly swatter, and then, uh, he's like, "Stop doing that." He's like, "Doing what?" And just poof, hits it, kills another one. That, and then all the cockroaches just start coming out of his sh- out of his shirt, and that's when he fucking go. He like goes down below the counter and then comes up with the two bottles of like insect killer. Yep. And you hear the growling from Edgar. You're like, oh, shit. And this is actually where you really start noticing. I mean, you see it earlier in the film, but you really start noticing Edgar, like <laughs> the skin is starting to decay. Yeah. And fall apart. So he's such wearing a cool, his Edgar such a suit. Cool touch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Such Didn't need cool to be in the touch. movie. Could have done no. without it. But no, it just. Yeah. yeah his skin bad. is like peeling. His teeth are kind of falling out. His, his eyes, eyes are glossing over. Yeah. It's such a cool touch. Uh, so, yeah. So he then throws fucking. Dr. Weaver around and you know asking her where she or the galaxy is or whatever and she's like I don't know what you're talking about I don't know who you are you are where do the drugs go yeah (laughs) like that connection uh but then they hear somebody else coming in and it happens to be J and K and they go in there and this is where you get the weird like moment between J and Dr. Weaver where you know the Edgar is underneath the table and he's got he's holding onto her leg and she's like, I need you. She's like, I need you to help me with an issue. It's down here. And this is, I didn't like this. Cause I'm like, no. Jay, you're a fucking idiot. He's, he's a like, dumbass. he's like, Whoa, like this is a little fast. He's like, this is, this is weird. And she's like, no, I, there's an issue. I need you to help me. That's down here. And he's like, it's like, lady, we go to dinner first? I don't, I, yeah. Should we go to dinner first? I barely know you. I feel this is moving too fast. I'm like, you are a fucking <laughs> idiot. And I love how she literally, after the whole thing where Edgar exposes himself, like when Jay finally was like, oh yeah. <laughs> and she's like, really? How fucking boneheaded are you? Yeah. He's like, I thought this was some, some weird way of flirting or something. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking oh. Jay. Because Kay oh. comes to the run of time because he sees David Cross dead on the ceiling. Yep. Uh, yeah, because he's going to that. light. He's go was going to light a cigarette. Yeah. Yep. He's not had sex in a while. He's yeah. He's, yeah, right. he's blue balled. Yeah. I feel like most of MIB people are. Probably. Um. Yeah, they never talk about it. It's not something that needs to be talked about. But whatever. Probably can't not. Have an, can't have a dissect that film episode without a little bit of sex talk. If you know what I mean. Well, that's what you got fanfics for. Exactly. If you work at MIB, um, you're either you're either having sex with somebody that works there or one of the aliens. Has one of the two. Come on, you know that fucking Zed had some probably some investigations done on him. Oh, absolutely. He was yeah. doing some fucking nineties corporate creepiness. Oh, it has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> not funny. Um <clears throat> I'm gonna shut my book since my nose are done. <laughs> So yeah, so I love to see it. So he grabs, he grabs, um, or he grabs the the galaxy. He swallows it. That was before, but he's hiding under there. He grabs Dr. Weaver. He jumps out the window and then he jumps onto the street, steals a taxi. I love how he has to take off the seat cover too. Yeah. Dude, those are, how do you fucking sit? Okay, listen, (laughs) I have never personally sat in a vehicle with these. I cannot imagine sitting on wooden beads would be very comfortable. However, I have seen them in many a car in a junkyard before. I don't understand it. Apparently, they are mm. comfortable. I don't get it. It's like a massaging type. I thought it was like a like a cultural thing because you know the guy is like Indian or Middle Eastern or something. But I've seen I've seen it as seat covers, and they're supposed to be like a massaging type. I- I, They're terrible. I've I've seen. I know people who had those. I have sat on them. They hurt. They're terrible. It's like all those old Ford, all those old pickups from the eighties that everybody's got them damn Hispanic looking rugs flopped over their fucking seats. All of I, them. All of, all of them. Um, I don't know, dude. It's so common. <laughs> the striped. I don't get it. 
but that's that's how Jay knows that he stole a taxi because he sees he sees the beads on the shit. ground. He's like, he took a taxi. He stole a taxi. <laughs> that dude was cruising though. Do you see like the guy after he was chasing after the fucking taxi? He's fucking yeah. hauling ass. Yeah, he was. Uh, Jay, of course, I love that Jay is like the the go. Like he he's always going one hundred and ten percent, and K is just casually, you know, yeah. going back to the car and stuff like because he knows. Jay's you know, instinctual, Jay's, man. He just reacts. Yeah. He's just doing what he's always done. And um, yeah, he uh, he doesn't find him, and K pulls up with the car. And this is when we get. Uh, this is when they go back to MIB, and this is when they talk. The Archelians take the the warning shot. In the Arctic. Yeah. He's like, what the hell is going on? He's like, well, this is their like warning. And we have like a some sort of like space, some like galactic week time. Standard frame. galactic week or something. Standard shit galactic like that. week. He's like, how long is that? An hour. <laughs> yeah. 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 The funniest fucking thing though that I never noticed was when J when it focuses on J and you can see uh K and Z in the background. And J and K is not even touching his keyboard. He's hovering at least six inches above his keyboard, pretending to type. Yeah, oh, I just, just noticed that. But... And doing the same motions every time. I was like, wow. It works. That is some, wow. You're I mean, out of focus. I, clearly, I never, clearly, I never, no, he was in, fu like, it wasn't, like, fuzzy. Like, it was, you oh. could clearly see that K is in the background not typing on his keyboard. I thought this was, like, an old and new, like, you know, transfer thing, which happened to me in another movie I watched. We'll talk about that later. Recently. It was funny. I just had to mention that. But K, or sorry, Jay notices the um, the spaceships, I guess, that are stationed at the old world's fair grounds. And he's like, do those still work? And they're like, oh, well, I guess we got to go there. Because that's yeah, we where that Edward's going. Movie. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that's where he they need to go. Uh, this is where you get to see the old, the, you know, that, uh, the four POS, which was mentioned earlier by Jay, um, which you're not supposed to press the red button. I didn't mention that before. He's warned not to press the red button, but they're driving through the, uh, they got to go through the Lincoln tunnel. I think, I think right. So. Lincoln is Lincoln tunnel. I think in so. sure. New York? I don't. Yeah. Fuck, I don't and know. this is when he's like, push the button. And so he pushes the button and it transforms the car into this cool ass fucking thing. And he's, he's like, oh, you like, might want to put a seatbelt on. <laughs> well, he tells <laughs> him throughout the movie every time he's in the car, he's yeah. like, put your seatbelt seat on. on. Put, put your seatbelt seat on, on, please. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he does. Yeah. And he just fucking, I love it when he like goes upside down, he fucking falls. And then he fucking puts the Elvis in. You're rocking out to Elvis. He's like, tracks. Yes. So good. He's like, you do know Elvis is dead. He's like, no, he just went home. You're like, yeah, yep. fucking line. And I gotta uh, it yeah, out now. I got to point it out. So I had to look this up because we, 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 I talked about this and I was thinking about when this movie came out. It's uh, the Ford POS is a Crown Victoria. It's a Ford LTD Crown Victoria. So I got to talk about this. It's an 83 to an 87. And I was trying to figure out why they use such an old car in the movie. Because at this time, this car at its newest would have been 10 years old. Nine to 10 years old. However, it is it is it would be correct. And that the fact that it is a fleet model, because usually those had like a like like a soft top to them, kind of a cloth padded top, but there was nothing. It was just model color. So it's either a police model yeah. or a pointless information. But I've seen it and I like those cars, so I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna talk about this for a second. So yeah, so they um, that's the way that they get there fast. It's like a rocket car, and they get to the uh, I guess it's called the New York State Pavilion. And Edgar is carrying Dr. Me uh, Dr. Weaver up the ladder up to the first ship, but she's like wiggling and, you know, just spouting some lies so that he will let her go. And he's just like, fuck this. This is too much work. And just tosses her into a tree. Well, she ends up wiggling free and he's like, ah, fuck it. Like, cause he looks yeah. back. And he's like, ah, cause he was just going to keep her to eat her. Yeah. Like, that's all he gave a shit about. So yep. just be hungry on the way home. man. Yep. Stop and by uh, he gets Her up to the ship. 7 he gets up to the ship, gets in it, and 
J and K show up and they get some big guns. And that's when I love when Jay's like, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. Yes. And he's like, all right, you need to in case is like, set it up to this setting and then just shoot it, shoot it, shoot it down. And fucking this is also the scene where you, uh, where the ship takes off and it's going over uh Shea stadium, which doesn't exist anymore. The home of the Mets. And the baseball player and like, oh, and fucking hit the ball, hits him in the head. Then you hear the crowd, <laughs> boo. <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> <taking it out. laughs> and later on, you see an article where it's like, you know, drops like game winning home run. He's like ruins career. <laughs> I was like, Poor yes, guy. Yeah. literally saw a Rip. spaceship. But yeah, so they shoot down the ship. I love this fucking whole thing where the ship crashes through like the globe. That's yes. in the fairground. Good and shot. I love how how different Jay and K are. So like Jay is like very like nervous because like they're not moving and K is just stoic, not like moving and not making any expression on his face. As the ship yes, like literally lands within like 25 feet of them. So good. And I, this is when Edgar comes out and he's like, you idiots. And just goes into his whole speech about you know what they're preventing and you know that even though they stopped him it's not going to stop the inevitable and you know this planet's doomed yeah and that's when jay you know uses his his police you know procedures is like all right i need you to drop your weapons and put your hands behind your head he's like oh put my hands behind my head and then fucking peels off the skin and becomes the gigantic cockroach. You're like, damn. Saris was not a fan of that scene, by the way. When she when you start peeling his skin. Oh, off, when you see like, it though, she got all scared. Like, oh. you know, she was asking, like, "When are we going to see the thing in the pit?" I was like, "You'll see it soon. It's at the end of the movie." <laughs> she so, liked it afterwards. She liked it. Then. She thought yeah. it was cool. That's really cool. Uh, so yeah, so Edgar is now a full fledged gigantic cockroach. Immediately eats their guns. And this is where K, and then they get thrown to the side, and that's when K is just like, "All right, kid, I need you to make sure that he does not leave this planet." And he's like, "Where are you going?" He's like, "I'm going back to get my gun." Yes. He's like, "What?" He's like, "Do not let him leave this planet." And then, literally, I love this fucking performance by Tommy Lee Jones, where he goes up, he's just like, "Hey, hey, eat me, yeah, eat me." And then he gets eaten. That's great. Yep. And Surprise. I love how you see the inside of uh, of the you know giant cockroach. It's really cool. He's yeah. like going through his body, and this is where you know uh, Jay's got to make his stand. He uh, he hits him with like a a piece of bar. Then he fucking he he gets thrown and he picks up a burning piece of bush and he's just like waving it in front of him and. He's just punched in the face by the bug. Oh, he gets like, fucking like lays the fuck out. <laughs> I guess this was something that Barry Sonnenfeld fought with with the studio about the fact that he gets he wanted that type of punch from the cockroach to Jay. Like that way, like I've, I've, originally, I guess it was just going to be like he pushes him out of the way, but he's like, no, I want him to fucking get a nice left <laughs> left hook right in the fucking jaw. It worked. It I took liked forever it. Forever for them to like come to terms on it. I was like, that is the dumbest thing ever I've ever heard in my life. Like the fact you <laughs> fought for that one like two second spot is yep. wild. Hollywood is crazy. Very. So, yeah, he gets thrown up against a trash can. Looks like he's gonna get knocked out, but he's good. And he notices. Oh, he knows a little bug. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna use this to my advantage. Breaks another hole into the garbage. That fucking garbage was. Thin as fuck. He it just rusts fucking, out good like. Oh yeah. And a bunch of cockroaches fall out of it. And that's when. Which were all real cockroaches. Uh, and yep. I guess they had to take inventory. Of all the cockroaches. Every single time they used them. They had to have the same number. Because for one cockroaches can breed very fast. Um, yeah. Even though. Also. Even though had, his... oh, go ahead. So the inventory had to be done for the. Um. No, what the hell? The Humane Society. Like it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the reason, another thing I was going to say is um, 
even though uh, most of what is used, the uh, hissing cockroaches are not considered a pest species. Most cockroaches are not pest species. Any of them can establish in an environment suitable enough. So, like, most, you know, hissing cockroaches aren't going to do anything. But if they find, like, a shitty enough place, they will. They can establish themselves. Like though they job. are not. There you go. Uh, the hissing cockroaches are not native to the United States, though. So they are also an invasive species. That's another reason they can't let them out. I, at my job, we have uh, invasive cockroaches that uh, they travel with the product we use, and we work in a very like dusty, dirty mill, so they thrive there. Oh, well, and also we'll say this: uh, German cockroaches and Oriental cockroaches, two of the most common household cockroaches, the pest species, are also obviously invasive. Um, yeah, damn, those are fucking fuckers. gross. I don't care. They, they, they are gross. hissing hissing cockroaches are dope as fuck though, dude. And palmetto bugs are awesome. Those are Florida. You probably saw no. some of those. No, no. yes, I didn't see they're any. I didn't see awesome. any palmetto bugs when I was there because it was no. like they're huge. They are I, huge. huge. And I went to wash my hands, and one was hiding behind the freaking towel when I went to dry my hands off. Hug Douglas. Dude, they're huge. You want to hang out? Like, hey, what are you guys doing in here? No. We're just hanging out in the palm trees. Like, get the fuck out of the bathroom. <laughs> like, I didn't even dry my hands off before I was out of the door. And they're like, what's wrong? I'm like, there's a palmetto bug right there. Cup it. Free. Cup it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, so the cockroach he knocks the, the thing out. The cockroaches come out, and then that's when he uses it to his advantage. He starts squishing them, and it allegedly there must it was mustard there packages. Mu yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, no, you were good. I was just making sure we got the same fact here. Um, Damn it, no, it was ketchup. <laughs> it's just Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's ketchup, but they switch. It's a ketchup packet. They put mustard inside of. Like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> we got <Why>? you. <laughs> Jokes on you. So yeah, I love the whole thing where it's like, oh, was that your auntie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he just keeps <laughs> squishing him and he's like, and it's pissing him off. And he was because he was climbing up to get to the second ship, but it like this like causes him to react and he comes back down and the whole thing, you know, where he gets in his face and he's like, Yeah, you bet you know, if you're gonna get this close, you better do something about it. And then you hear the gun start to to go like load up in his stomach, he's like, "Well, too late for that." And it is, and you see how it's halves split apart. Yep. When I was a kid, this next scene, I was like, "Are there fucking two of them?" For I the longest that. time, yep. watching Same. this movie, I thought it was a different fucking cockroach. Same. But it's just the top half of the Edgar bug. Because if they're based on insects or insect like insects are don't have a centralized nervous system or more most arthropods don't so they have ganglia bundles so if you actually cut one in half that's why like they can still survive without their heads temporarily because they're bundles of ganglia that actually go down the body control different parts of the body it's not like our brain does everything so it, here's a, here's a side note i mean we're talking about cockroaches so uh is it true that if you squish a cockroach that their eggs can like in bed in your shoes you can bring them home with you well normally cockroaches when they lay uh they lay an egg sack you know you know, you know how shark, sharks do the mermaid purse yeah well some some sharks, sharks yeah, yeah, yeah. do mermaid it's similar yeah. to that it, it's a it's a hard uh item that is on the end of their ab abdomen it's that like they, they yeah that drops off and it's full of eggs inside and then they burst out of it so um, technically yes if you stepped on one it could get lodged in your shoe and under optimal conditions will still release its young but it has to have that uh oh, oh it's called ootheca oh, so it's interesting called, that egg case so it have to be like in between the yeah the track in between the tracks of your shoe yeah. gotcha that's correct um so yeah so uh, they're on the ground they're covered in uh, k is covered with the insides and the outsides of uh the bug yep and mm. yum they got the galaxy I don't know how Jay, like, it's literally right next to Jay. He's just like, oh, hey, there's the galaxy. And that's what K calls it in. But um, you see behind them, the uh, top of the Edgar bug is moving and it's coming in. And right as it's about to attack, that's when it gets blown up again. And 
It's Dr. Weaver. She did it. Yay. Unforgettable character. Uh, <laughs> and that's it. And they go back to uh, the entrance to MIB headquarters. And this is when Kay pretty much tells Jay that, you know, I wasn't training a partner. I was training a replacement because he says the line like, hey, have you ever looked? Have you ever just looked up and looked at the stars and you're like, oh, no, not UK. Yep. And I love the the whole thing where, he, you know, Kay's just like, see you around, kid. And he's just like, no, you won't. And flashes him. Yep. And then we get this fucking, what the fuck is this outfit that Jay is wearing? Why does it's he look like a outfit. fucking preacher, man? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. Every time. I don't like, like she's it. Wearing, so, so Dr. Weaver becomes an MIB agent for about 13 seconds because you never see her in this franchise again. Uh, so yeah, she's wearing, she becomes an MIB agent, but she's got the, the whole getup, you know, she's got, I mean, she's wearing like the skirt and stuff, but she's got the tie and stuff, but fucking like, did Will Smith go? I, I want to wear a different outfit for the end of this movie. And it's like, no, it doesn't fit. You look like you're about to go to fucking church. It's stupid. Stop. It. It's, it's stupid. dumb. I hate it. Why would he, why would suddenly Will Smith come into it and suddenly be able to do that? Yeah, I don't like it. Like, you, you can't just change the outfit, dude. That's not how that works. So they talk about Dennis Rodman, and she's like, oh, Rodman's like, yeah. If I, if like, I mean, aliens do exist. Come on, people. Let's be realistic here. It, there are aliens out there. But like, if you look at Dennis Rodman, would you be surprised if like, yeah, Dennis Rodman's an alien? I'd be like, could have told you that. Um, well, that's what she says. She's like, Dennis, Dennis Lauder, really? It's like, it's not a very good disguise. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what she does say. Yeah, yeah because but I guess she was more surprised because it was, you wouldn't think. He's like, okay, right. well, that's a shit ex- disguise. Like, Damn, he doesn't really hide it well. No. But, and I love it's the like whole thing where. Neon sign. Oh, yeah, especially now. It just gets worse and worse. <laughs> um, but I like how it zooms out. You see the city, and then it shows the galaxies and all that. And then it turns out they're just marbles. You know, yeah. are just playing marbles with the galaxies. You're like, okay, that's cool. I like it. And uh, that's it. That's Men in Black. And then you get to hear Will Smith's cool song. Yeah. Here come Men in Black. And I was like, no, I'm good. Stop. <laughs> I still I remember the. Was I remember with it. that song. Yes. I remember, I remember it being on the radio. I still remember the music video. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Nod Your Head was for Men in Black, too. Nod Your Head. I- Black suit, baby. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. Back when he, MTV, this is back when he uh, made still a. Still played. Wait. Yeah. Movie, movie what was the alien in the in the music video for the first one? Was it, it Mikey? Was fucking Mikey. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, because they minute. felt bad that they had to he kill dances. him two seconds into the movie. Well, no, he did, he was complying. Fuck that yeah. asshole. They should like, yeah. like I like how uh, Men in Black have like there's like no detaining methods. No. It's like you either come with us or we're gonna fucking blast you. They're so, like they just killed they just killed an alien. They're just like eh, okay, move on with the day. I'm like what the fuck? That, imagine if our fucking border patrol was like that. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is back when Will Smith made a song for like every movie he was in, like oh, Wild yeah. Wild West and Wild Wild oh, West, Men in Bla- the two Men in Black movies, like Miami. Like yep. I don't think Miami's for a movie, but like I was like I Nothing always just pictured that with like w- I mean, you Bad Boys was set in Miami. Miami. We're gonna get yeah. the flag for this. Um, Who gives a shit? Nobody watches our stuff on YouTube anyway. <laughs> They'll find it. Sorry to everybody who actually watches us on YouTube. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. I hope hope immediately after I start slandering YouTube for their shitty ass ways, we suddenly get like a huge spike. It's my key. Of a huge spike in like uh, news. Yeah, because I remember remember the music video. I have seen the music video. So I was like, wait a minute, isn't that my key? This video is great. I love it. But that's it. That is Men in Black. Yeah, because this is one of the movies that I had to watch with Jeannie and Holly. I watched so much with so, them, with them. Oh, I'm so I imagine the porn version where this would have been Men in Blacks. This would have been one. Men, men's and blacks. What? <laughs> nothing. Okay, nothing. You immediately had to think of what the porn version of this movie. Absolutely. <laughs> look who you're talking to here. <laughs> <laughs> Should I look it up? Men in Black porn parody. I'm gonna look it up. I'll save your your browser history. Your wife's right. like, what are you looking up? So some side notes. Uh, 
Clint Eastwood <laughs> was, was asked to play K. Turned it down, of course. Um, a lot of people, uh, I guess the studio uh, wanted Chris O'Donnell for J, and I'm glad they didn't no. do that. Uh, David Schwimmer was asked to do it. Oh, that. God, no. Imagine fucking Ross from Friends. Okay, he could have been a good Regic. Oh, I, I mean, listen, I love David Schwimmer because I love Friends. Or Jeebs. Yeah. He could have been one but of he could have been a good Jay. one of those, but not. This was a perfect Jay. pairing between Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. Um, I would have fucking hated if Chris O'Donnell was it. Uh, but but Barry Sonnenfeld's wife was a fan of Fresh Prince, and so he's like, you know, you should you should have Will Smith be in this movie. And I am disappointed by the name of this. It's just called Men in Black, a hardcore parody. This is fucking. <laughs> this is listen. I like porn titles are usually a lot of them could be hilarious, but this is just uninventive and uninspiring guys. Come on. <laughs> uh, for Edgar, John Turturro and Bruce Campbell were asked if they wanted to play this role, but turned it down for scheduling issues or conflicts. And uh, like Bruce you know, Campbell could have been. Oh, this could have been Bruce Campbell. Listen, Bruce Campbell can do anything he fucking does. <laughs> Me too. Do anything you set your mind to. I fucking love Bruce Campbell. He is just so cool. Yes. But that's it. That is Men in Black from 1997. Nice little, nice little tribute to a movie that uh, was has been very important in my life for the last 25 years, and it's crazy to think that it is 25 years old. I forgot how good this movie was. It's so good. It's so you know we didn't good. ask about that at the beginning of this video. You fucked oh. this up, Parker. Well, we drop the ball. There. You're sick. The You're gone for two weeks. You expect Clearly us to pick we up? Clearly, we like this movie, right? <laughs> yes, I love it. Jesus, <laughs> what the fuck are we doing yeah. next week? I don't even know. We didn't even plan this. <sighs> Listen, wait, wait. We're not till Halloween yet, so never mind. No, we're still okay. a few weeks away. So. I don't feel like doing the entire Men in Black franchise right now. Uh, maybe down the road we'll do two, and then like we're gonna we're gonna stay away from franchises. Probably we'll maybe do a franchise in November um, to kind of set us up for uh, the Christmas season. So next week we're gonna do a movie that we were originally gonna do in August, but with scheduling and all different things that happened. Uh, we kind of put it to the uh, put it on the side, uh, but I think next week we're going to talk about Prey. Okay, um, okay cool, sweet. Which is yeah. the new Predator movie that came out at the beginning of August. I know that a lot of people have already talked about Prey, and Prey has been talked to death. <laughs> but I've wanted to talk about Prey. We're going to do a full podcast episode on Prey, not just the fresh cut. Fresh cuts are kind of. On the side right now, I don't really have any idea when we're going to be doing a fresh cut again. Um, but uh, yeah, next week for episode 71, we're going to be talking about the 2022 Prey, which I'm very excited about because I've already seen it. But I think for the for this, I'm going to watch the Comanche version of the movie, which I've heard is really good. So very excited to do that. I think the movie is insensitive and I don't like it. It's oh, woke. That's not true. It's woke, That's everybody. True. It's everything's woke. woke. Everything, Everything is. is fucking woke. I hate this. <laughs> Everything is fucking woke. Uh, don't worry. We might get comments that just tell us like how wrong we are because we. I mean, I like it. Spoiler: alert. I like prey. Um. Hey, that's how it goes? That's how the internet works? You don't like it? That's true. Listen. Uh, but thank you everybody for being here and uh, showing all the love. Uh, we sorry for the late release of our American Pie episode. I'm glad that we I was finally able to release it, and I hope you all enjoy it. It was a fucking bonkers episode, and we had uh, Dark yeah. Razor back on the show again. That was a lot of fun. Yay. Um, for as far as other shows go, it's just. It's chaotic right now. Like I'm, I'm getting over COVID as of this recording. Uh, things like I want to get my st studio. I say it in air quotes because it's not really a studio, but it's my little corner of my. This is where I work, and it's Your a fucking nook. disaster. And I need to get this shit back <laughs> in order. So I need to stop scheduling all this shit for myself, and then not getting to the things that I need to get done. So we're just gonna be Me. focusing on the podcast 
the main main podcast as of right now. Fresh cuts, slice of TV. It's gonna come back. It's not going anywhere. We're still gonna be. We're still planning on doing a Patreon at some at some point. Um, like I said, it, we've been talking about it for a while, and it's just the fact of trying to find the time to make the content for it and figure out what we're gonna do with it and the scheduling and all that stuff. So it's coming at some point. It'll it'll be there. Um. We definitely are going to be looking to have some more guests on the show. So many people that I want to have on the show and uh, got to get that rolling um, because having people, other people from other podcasts or just having our friends come on and, and talk about, you know, their favorite movies or, you know, movies that we pick out that they enjoy. Like it's, it's, it's been a blast having dark rays art on the last episode was great. You know, we, you know, having the movie, the guys from movie dumpster, that was a blast. You know, we had, yes. uh, Justin from Alex Film so Guys, fun. who we definitely want to have back since uh, he couldn't come back yeah. for the Batman episode, which was um, what he was going to be on. But unfortunately, things didn't work out. But uh, we'd love to have him back on and the rest of uh, Brain Stew. So many yeah. things, guys. So many things in the works. It's just trying to find the time to figure everything out. Uh, thank you all for getting us over 5,000 downloads. I think we're almost halfway oh. through 5,000. Did we? Are we already? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Oh, we're, yeah. Something like that. I don't know the numbers yeah. exactly at this point in time. Uh, but thank you just for all the support and the love. Uh, we're, yes. you know, I'm, I'm trying my best to, to get you guys the, uh, you know, quality content. You know, this is a, this isn't a show where we do in depth research and, you know, I, I, I there are maybe down the road, I'm going to be doing a lot more. It's just trying to find the time for it. It's just us sitting down talking about movies you know, the best of our recollection and just having fun with it. It's nothing to, there's a lot of movie podcasts out there and we don't want to be like everybody else. So if we're yeah. just that kind of, uh, we're, uh, we're, I consider our show on the cuff. We're just very, we just go with it. There's no script. There's no, like our notes is just so that we kind of keep ourselves in order. And so, like I said today, I didn't even fucking finish my notes. <laughs> it's just true. about us sitting down and having fun talking about movies. Cause that's what I love to do. So, uh. I hope you like what we do here. And if you guys have any feedback that you want to share with us, please leave a comment in the U on YouTube, on the video. Make sure you leave a comment on any of the podcast services that you listen on that allows you to leave comments. Make sure to rate our show wherever you listen to us. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Good Pods, uh, anywhere. Anywhere you guys can leave us a review, please do. Because I can look at them all. And I love it. It really uh, makes me feel good. Even if it's something that's a little bit more, you know, if you're critiquing us, I'm still down for that too, because that helps us out. Yeah. So, you know, if you want, if you, any podcast out there want somebody on there, ask Parker, because Parker would love to be on there. He'll never invite us, but Parker, you <laughs> not just fucking with you. Parker speaks for us as well. We do appreciate you guys. We really do. Yes. Parker Thank fills you. in all the blanks for us. <laughs> I mean, we all have we all have lives outside of this. So yeah, it's it's a lot, and I know there's a lot of podcasts uh -huh. out there that bust their ass, and I appreciate you, and I see you all out there that do. You know, I listen to a lot of podcasts as, uh, along with doing this, and I know all the hard yeah. work that everybody out there does on their shows, and you guys, you know, deserve everything. And you know, we put you know, even if it is like one of those shows where we just come here and we just kind of we just sit here and talk about a movie, like it's still a lot of work goes into yeah. doing this, so it's not just. It's not just a fucking copy and paste slap together type thing to a degree. No. Um, you know, there's still a lot of work that we have to do every week to make sure we can get these shows out and, and make sure it's, you know, a quality show. You know, we it's just for me, it's about having fun. And if we're not having fun, yeah. then what the fuck is the point? Yeah. yeah. So and these guys make a quality show and I just try to bring it down a few notches. Yeah. That's what I'm here for. Exactly. hundred percent. I mean, when you when you do something that you want to do. It's fun. It's not a chore. Stop. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, you got to have fun doing it or it's 100%. not fun anymore. Yep. You know, it's a, it's a lot of hours. You know, we're not getting compensated, you know, and, and I don't care about the money. It's all about just having fun. No. I, I have, we, you know, if, if, to be able to sit here, you know, you know, Dan and Angela, they don't live very close. They don't live close to me at all, but very far no. away. 
So it's not, you know, I can't just like go hang out with them and, you know, just have these type of conversations. This is where we get to have these conversations. And yep. I decided One day. I wanted to record them and put them on the internet so that you all can hear them. And, you know, we got people out there who are loyal listeners and I appreciate the hell out of you. We have people, you know, joining us, you know, 70 episodes in and we love, yeah. you all. we love everyone who listens to the show, shares the show. We appreciate all the support that you give to the show because that's why we keep doing it. If you, if we didn't get that support, then it feels like, what's the point, you know? Yeah, it's true. So thank you. Thank you very much. We just call, we just call Parker and talk about movies and not record it. Yeah, on the phone, <laughs> just like just like yeah. old school. Like I'm gonna get a rotary phone, well, a wall like, phone. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was gonna say hey I don't guys, even have your. Are you watching Jeopardy had, too? <laughs> don't even yes. have your number, so I wouldn't even be able to do that. We find call it. through Discord. Just show up at his house. I mean, you could just Parker, ask what's your me. phone number? You could just call ask you. me, and I would give it to you. You guys, I, I can trust with that I know. Phone I d- I did have a dream the other night that I got a job placement in Pennsylvania. I'm like, oh, we're close to Park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like i don't God, know where that so came nice. from don't fucking tell oh. people before we go <laughs> into more rambling thank you again for the thousandth time there's not enough thank yous to go around uh until next time guys i am brett parker that is dan and angela of dna gaming we are dissect that film and this has been the dissect that film podcast episode 70 70 everybody wild stuff we'll see you all again next time bye